eight minutes late, but we yeah. need to go live on Oh, yeah, all right. right. Okay, so let me do that. Sorry, guys. Hey, folks, welcome. Um... Yeah, we just had a few things to do, like move the Ecto into position. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, just those small little things. You know, nothing, nothing major. All right. How is everyone? If you're there and you're still hanging in and you've been waiting, welcome. Um, and uh, yeah, throw, I mean, throw us some questions in chat. I was gonna try and look on this uh, iPad, but Nick, you gotta get, oh, hang on, the Wi-Fi's better now. I was gonna say, you gotta get your Wi-Fi sorted out in this room. Hey, are we good? I gotta hit the button. Yeah, go live on. Ah, oh, there it is. Instagram, there we go. Sweet, it's happening, it's happening. Good? Yes, oh, we're good. Uh, you have to send me anything or this? Yeah. You have to, you go and, go and watch, uh, view the live and then join it. There you go. Do I need to give him permission? You might have to, yeah. Oh, Julian, I'll give you permission. I don't yep, take. I'm in. You have to, you're in? You need to have to press it on there. Okay. Uh, yeah. There it is. Okay. Okay. Good. Here we are. All right. We are live, finally. And I'm going to try and see if we can watch this from here and uh, get the chat going. Oh, we need to mute one of these. Uh, probably mute yours. Actually, like mute the audio. No, don't ring SOS. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. It. Sweet. All right. All right. Oh, hey, wow. I see. I see the echo tech there. No, there he is. Fun time. <laughs> <laughs> Double echo tech. If you didn't have enough echo tech already, put me, you, you can now get two. I'm going to move this slightly, right look like this, so this is. I mean, I talk. I talk to plenty of people. No one ever gets enough echo tech. So, <laughs> you know. I only set this up so we can see what these people are saying, because me and Nick. But we can't see that. I, I can. <laughs> yeah. Welcome yeah. to the live stream. Uh, Welcome. Yeah. You know what? So the first live stream, uh, if you sat through us uh, rambling, uh, that was <laughs> over on the uh, collectible side. But welcome to the shop. Uh, we're not, I'm not completely done here. We have some things. But as you can see, we have a bunch of arcade games. We have this old girl right here. Uh, the workshop's on the other side. We're not going to go over there today. But, uh, but yeah, so welcome to the, the home of the Ecto-1NJ. Uh, last time we were live stream, actually, it was uh, getting pretty for the premiere. It so, was, yeah. Uh, she's back and ready to go, and uh, yeah. I, I feel like, you know, like, you remember those videos Green that we from did the cast? So. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we need to do those, you know, the... Oh, yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever, <laughs> you know, you want to do. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, and then you guys can just hang out, take whatever videos you want. There we go. TikTok yeah. it up. <laughs> TikTok it up. So cool. There's a question here. It says, how does the car start the live stream? Has the what? How does the car start the live stream, it says. How does uh, the car start? Yeah, well, it, it almost so did it. So honestly, uh, <laughs> you know, Pizzetto, you know, oh. you never know. It could. It know? could. So I hope, uh, I hope everyone's seen Frozen Empire, if you haven't. And, and in Frozen Empire, the car takes those impossible corners out of the firehouse, just like spinning on a dime. Yeah. And, like, I'm expecting the car to be able to flip out on uh, the side like this. Yeah, I, I know someone that could do that. Just like the movie. No, I, I don't know what he's talking about. I've never done that before. I take it very slow. Uh, but yeah, I've seen some of the, uh, I don't know where it was. I saw a video of uh, the car in London, obviously with the, the CGI, but just whipping out of the, uh, the set that they had built in London, yeah. which was uh, pretty cool to see. It was. Um, but you know, here's the thing, guys. Like, we can do that in New York City. We don't For need real. A, we don't need a CGI screen. Um, so yeah, and then, you know the the cool thing about the spring now now that Frozen Empire, all the publicity stuff, we're getting back to ghost tours, right? So like, get excited about ghost tours. Um, I'm excited. I know Greg had, took the first spring one the other day. Uh, I did not realize it was outside the uh, Javits Center at the car show. So uh, we're not an attendee, but um, and I believe you you rolled through an earthquake. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a Ecto One NJ response to the earthquake. Yep. I was actually talking to uh, NYPD. We were busy doing the first uh, tour of the year, yeah. and uh, NYPD decided they wanted to check the car out. And then all at the same time, I hear everybody's phones go burr for the earthquake, mm. and it's literally the, you just hear that going off all over the city. But, but you know what? We're I guess classified as an emergency vehicle at this point. So totally. we were on the ground now. Yeah. 
It honestly, I was uh, I was going to post some of the uh, the final battle scene with Gozer and say right. live look at Central Park West when the uh, <laughs> you know, but like when I the street did, starts I, to fall. I about. didn't yeah. know if anyone was affected. Uh, my lawn chair fell over, so there's devastation everywhere. Um, <laughs> I had a bush that shook that shook in my house. Yeah, no disrespect. Yeah. Listen, if if somebody was affected, you know, we're just having some playful banter. But uh, four point eight for New Jersey, and then we had the eclipse, yeah. which I still you know. You know, it's. I don't if, know. If it's, there was ever a time for the Ghostbusters, it's now. I'm just saying, it's right? Now. Something biblical, biblical proportions <laughs> coming. You, you know, have you have a request from Turkey. It says, "Hello from Turkey. Can you please turn on the lights on the vehicle?" <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, we will do that for you before, as long as the uh, the battery's got some juice. We'll definitely make sure. We'll make sure. Yeah, listen, first live stream. What? It just moved. Oh, that's because you you did the OK sign, or somebody did, and now it's like gonna track me. Look. That is the creepiest thing okay. I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm um, gonna hold up my hand like this. We're a little we'll over it. There we go. Our live stream. Yeah, there we go. I'll pull it back down. Wow, that is. I did not know technology does that. So, it's pretty cool. So anyway, cool. so um, I'll enough turn it off. jibber jabber. Let's just basically uh, talk a little bit about what we're we're doing tonight. So two things. One, obviously, goes towards being back. That's very exciting. Um, but. We have a little bit of a project that we're going to be doing over the next five to six weeks um, with Ghost Tours. So I posted today, you want to be, you want to win a free Ghost Tour or come on a Ghost Tour. Uh, so obviously the next big milestone, guys, for Ghostbusters lands. Anybody? Anybody? June 8th? Little day coming up? Wait, what's that? What, what is on June 8th? Is it something important? Uh, you know, a little bit. So now that we've rode the Frozen Empire wave, you know, I mean, listen, if you haven't seen it, go see it. If you've seen it, see, see it more, you know, pay Sony more money. Um, but <laughs> some uh, people can't see it yet because it's not in, out in their country. Yeah, people, that's people from Brazil. I know we have, a, I have a fan on my channel that's from Brazil. Okay. Who may not be watching this for the very purpose. They did say they were going to stay I would, out of all content. I would try to <laughs> brush up on my Portuguese if I knew that. But um, but yeah, so um, now that we're shifting our focus uh, to the 40th anniversary, um, obviously the Ecto-1 NJ will be back. Uh, Ghostbusters Day, June 8th. I believe it starts at noon, but you know, just follow Go Buffalo Ghostbusters as we get closer because uh, Dan and his team over there, they, they make the arrangements and everything. Shout out to them, they do a great job. Um, so yeah, so with that being said, leading up to the 40th anniversary, I had an idea and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, I'm not sure if anyone out there is familiar with Jerry Seinfeld, is it Riding in Cars with Comedians? Uh, comedians yeah. in cars getting coffee or something? Something like that. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing over the next six weeks is going to be filming interviews in the Ecto-1 NJ during a ghost tour, and we're going to be putting the content together uh, for the 40th anniversary of Ghostbusters. Uh, now, we have some notable Ghostbusters folks. Now, I can't name names yet because we're still, you know, getting the, uh, you know, ink dried and all that stuff, <laughs> as you will. Uh, but we want the true fandom out there. We want, you know, if you're a part of a franchise, if you have a, a story about Ghostbusters in your life or what it means to you, we want to hear from you. And we want you to send us the information, tell us why, listen, you want to make a memorable memory for the, uh, memorable, is that, can I say that, a memorable memory? You can if you want. Sure, okay, that works. Okay. Uh, so yeah, send, uh, send us, oh, you know what, we got to get the thing from the, for the email because people didn't get it last time. Oh, yeah. Anyway, sorry, ADD kicking in. Uh, yeah, if, if I throw trips on this. Uh, they will be able to tell us the, the email address. Okay, yeah. that, that's a good point. We have it a sign with email. So yeah, so we want to hear your stories and we're going to do it as a, uh, a YouTube uh, mini series leading up uh, and then even past the 40th anniversary. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. I think it's a really unique experience. Uh, not only are you going to go in the Ecto-1, you're going to have a ghost tour you're going to see and now the new and improved ghost tour, may I add, because um, spoiler alert again if they haven't seen the movie, um, that first, that first scene where they're chasing the, uh, Hell's Kitchen sewer dragon, that's on the tour route, folks. So you're going to literally drive just like Gruberson did down Fifth Ave and you're going to see the H&M or whatever other buildings were in there. And again, not CGI'd in this car. For right? real. For real. For you, real. Although that was the stunt driving, so they were in New York City. But you are going to witness and you're going to live that experience um, for real. And, uh, and then we'll, you know, do the other points that we usually do. Um, so yeah, so I, it's really, 
an exciting little thing that I think uh, will will make some memories for some people. Definitely, yeah. totally. I uh, yeah, as you see here, the EctoTech. I, I pulled them off working on the one A for this um, because we go all hours of the night here. Um, <laughs> as Nikki calls it, EctoTech after dark. Stay tuned. Yeah, that's true. That's coming up later. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, it yes. won't be on my channel. Just to be clear, <laughs> PG. We we know what we, we know what to keep here. Um, so yeah, I, it'll I, be on Greg's channel. It, yes, it will. Yes, it will. There was actually a YouTube video called EctoTech After Dark, I believe, right? There is. We did that the night. Well, I say we, the royal we. Me and my multiple personalities did it the night before the uh, premiere because I was awake for what was it, like fifty hours straight. Yeah, that's so, uh, a that's fair good time. Fair point. That that was a long couple of weeks um, with all of the different it was. events. You know, it was crazy. I uh, I've never worked a movie premiere like it. They worked. We were there at seven thirty in the morning at the firehouse, and we were there till five o'clock. And then we're uptown to the movies and the fan pen, which I still don't love the vernacular. Um, <laughs> that was not that was not a good time. We were uh... that that was tough. I'll be honest. Anyone else, if they're they're watching, that was in the fan pen. I that was caged in with us, that was getting, <laughs> getting cattle prodded. <laughs> um, you know, I know Bill Murray did come in and, and threw some water, and uh, you know what? Honestly, they were running behind, so I don't think. The folks in the fan pen really got that real experience, they like were, the entire experience. They we were waiting for Bill. They wanted to take a cast photo, and so that meant that kind of we waited a long time. That's right. And then people came in. Mm -hmm. Some of them didn't even do the fan pen, and part it wasn't. I don't think that they didn't want to come in and do it. Mm -hmm. It's that they were being. You could see they were being. Pushed. Yeah. So what are you trying to say? We should blame <coughs> Extraplasm, Jim Maritato, for taking up too much of their time in, <laughs> in the uh, in the tent. Oh, that was no. We just shout out, we shout should out blame Bill. We, I think we should blame Bill. Yeah, that's. <laughs> so. I mean, listen. If you're a fan of Bill Murray, you know, the dude runs on his own schedule. He's gonna come when he comes. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was really cool to be. And you know, a big shout out to Ghost Corpse and Sony for letting the car uh, be a part of the day. Um, you know, everyone I've worked there worked with there has been wonderful so uh definitely really cool experience and then you know we had our own little new jersey premiere uh big shout out to anybody who came out to Carastodes and sea caucus our good yep. friends uh, uh also in cranford uh doreen um and you know what honestly my favorite part of that two-day event and again it was a lot of work getting this stuff was um was in cranford uh now i'm not giving out last names because he was a kid but this kid justin came and he comes up to me, I'm checking people in, and he's like, Justin, he gives me, I'm like, okay. And I'm looking, I give him his four tickets, and I'm like, he's with three younger kids. I'm like, D is there a parent? He goes, no. He's like, I watched the live stream, I answered the questions, <laughs> and I brought my friends here. So, uh, it's like when Kevin McAllister goes shopping by himself yeah, in the li club. Literally, you know, it's just like, I, I mean, I don't know if the toothbrush was ADA certified, but, you know, it was... It was awesome to see, and a big shout out to him. And you know the cool thing, and I did not rig this, I promise. He ended up winning uh, the all basket, that, right? the whole Hasbro basket. That's right. You know the, the original Kenner repros and some of the new stuff. So um, if he's watching, Justin, who came to the Cranford show, you are the reason why Ghostbusters will continue. You were us back in the day, of course. Um, so awesome job, everyone uh, who came out. Thank you so much. I hope you guys had a good time. We sure did. We did. We yeah. Had a great time. It yeah. Great. Yeah. It was uh, a lot of fun. And you know what? Again, keep going to see the movie so we can do it again in two and a half years, you know? Um, I think, you know, it's done fairly well. And again, I don't want to get too much into a movie review because, you know, there's a thousand yeah. videos out there reviewing it. I mean, I, really? I enjoyed it. Yeah, a few. <laughs> yeah, a Sony, few. if you need a power mechanic for the next one, or a power videographer, power videographer. Or a stunt driver. Oh, yeah, no, I'm down for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Jer Jeremy Fry did a great job, but I think Nikki could do the swing out of the firehouse. With I think so. 580 horsepower, a little bit. We've we've seen that. I, Nick has done that. For I, real. I I do it with the the Chevy small block. You give me an LS3 with some beefed up suspension. Right. I mean, I, and you get me on the cheap too. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was just uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, so uh, thank you again to everybody who came out, that participated, that listened to us, that answered you know the questions and and all that stuff. So. Um, but yeah, no, good stuff, and so now we move on to the 40th, but, uh, yeah. oh yeah, speaking of, all right, so, the other thing that we have going on here is, uh, Ghostbusters Day, uh, so now I had talked to, uh, the folks that book it, and we're gonna do some special stuff, but, you're gonna get the opportunity to ride in the Ecto-1NJ to Ghostbusters Day 
at the firehouse. Now that's pretty cool. Um, details, I haven't, I haven't figured the whole thing out, but uh, we will do it through Instagram. Um, and uh, it's gonna be an experience because I have, I've driven the car there twice. I'm always late because they tell me one time and you, you drive into a crowd and people that, that take ghost tours, they tell me all the time, like I feel like a celebrity you're gonna feel like the mayor of New York uh, when you come in this. So uh, we're gonna give the opportunity to four lucky winners uh, to come to Ghostbusters Day in the Ecto-1 NJ with me and the Ecto-2. Well, you know what? You may be driving a different car. Book, book me as your tour guide, book Nikki as your tour guide. Yeah. And if we get another car going, book Matt as your tour guide. And we're gonna make him drive an Ecto-2. Yeah, yeah, wow. but, but yeah. we have to have a right side driver for this guy. Do we? Yeah, it's just no. The, I can drive. I can drive it. I've been driving yeah, in America for six years. I know, but still, you know, he's gonna do it. Oh, big! Hey, by the way, before I forget, shout out to everyone in Liverpool for this guy. All his family. Shout out to my favorite bro. Yeah. Um, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got I, I gotta love the Liverpool uh, folks out there. Um, so yeah, so details are, are. I'm not from Liverpool. Oh, guy, one amazing. thing about ghost stores while we're talking about ghost stores, and I think Matt will attest to this. So while you're on ghost stores and you're running through the streets of New York, New Yorkers are not impressed. They don't look, they don't, they're, everyone's in their own little world until this baby comes. Yeah. And yeah. Matt's actually been hanging out the window of his office because he hears the siren uh, going and then he <laughs> yells to Nick from, uh, from, what was it, what are you, 24 up? Yeah, well, not quite that high, but high yeah. enough. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, but it brightens everyone's day. I don't think they'd let's open the windows to 20 floors up. That would be yeah. dangerous. But. I mean, listen, I mean, as long as the stock market's not crazy. Do you think it makes people happy fine. in the city, Matt? <laughs> What's that, sir? Do you think the car makes people happy in the city? The car makes people very happy. Uh, when I was on, we were talking about this on it. I mean, you talked about it with, with Jim on Extraplasm. I talked about it with Jim on Extraplasm. When, when um, Jim rode in the car with you guys, mm -hmm. that was the big takeaway that he had, which was, people go crazy. And that's the first thing that I said, you know, when we were first rode the car together. Yeah, sure. I was, apart from being red in the face with excitement. Um, <laughs> never living that day. Which I never, well, like, you just watch the video, I'm just like, oh, this is amazing. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, people love it. So New York has turned from, you know, these focused people. I think about myself when I'm traveling from the office to Port Authority to get home. Mm -hmm. Heads down, I want people to get out of my way, I just want to get home as quickly as possible. And that's what most people are like in New York. They're not trying to interact with each other. So they're not friendly? <laughs> and I, I, I find that hard to believe. Are you trying to say people look around and step on their faces as they look at you? No. But you know, honestly though, I, <coughs> I've obviously lived in Jersey. I was born in New York, you're a Jersey guy. I mean, you're from across the pond, but like, that we're just conditioned that way. So like, if I go across the country, like down south, and they're like, "Oh, good morning to you," I'm like, "All right, what's your deal? What do you want?" Like, I mean, <laughs> so like, uh, I prefer it that way. Now, what I would say is, you just mentioned Liverpool. We actually have a person on the live chat right now called the Geeky Scouser. Yes, you need to come here for Ghostbusters <laughs> Day because you will get Matt's family discount because he's from Liverpool. <laughs> or as he uh, says, Liverpool. Yeah, as he says. No, is that, that's is that not. Better? That is not how they say it. They say it Liverpool. No, no. Right. I, I think I think we need to get the geeky scouser to to comment here on on this. Uh, if if you're still on the live, geeky scouser, tell tell us how good Nick's accent is. As and a I did see Jerry join the live stream. Uh, no, Jerry, Nick did not give away the Kenner figures that you sent. We hung them up in the office. Oh, that's thank, nice. Thank you. Oh no, I never give away yeah. anything anyone ever. So thank, shout out to Jerry for that. Thanks, Jerry. Yes, thank you so much. Um, yeah, no, I love, I love interacting with the groups and the folks that we meet because, you know, we have a whole place for memorabilia here. You saw it last night. What's up? I just, the Geeky Scouts are saying, you, are, you guys are all wrong. That's not how it goes. And okay. I was laughing at us. Is he coming to Ghostbusters? So wait, even, even your <laughs> Liverpool accent isn't right? Wow. Well, I mean, I'm I didn't, just saying. didn't really do a Liverpool accent. I mean, I, I, I can't even do it now. I'm too embarrassed with the Liverpudlian watching. It's, I can't. I'm I can't. not, because it's still it's Liverpool. Liverpool. Isn't it? That's not even right. That's okay. The Nazi. Liverpool. Uh, I'm just saying, like, he knows that I'm closer than he is. So, to how it actually should. <laughs> so, like, somebody that's never been to Liverpool. I've actually been to Liverpool. You know, I travel a lot. The, <laughs> most, <laughs> the most Italian Brit you'll ever meet. <clears throat> just saying. <clears throat> You could message me you know, on the side and just confirm that I'm closer than he is. So the Geeky Scouser says, yes, he's going to be there. So what is going to happen is you need to come and make yourself known to us. And then oh, yeah. we need to put Nick's 
Liverpudlian accent. Oh, yeah. Next to your Liverpudlian mm -hmm. accent. Mm -hmm. And then we need to do a compare and contrast. That has got to happen at Ghostbusters Day. Very important. I, so, uh, so come find us. That's a good way to ring in the 40th. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Honestly, <laughs> the, the, 40th, the 40th anniversary, I think, I mean, last year was crazy. Like, so much, like, I was, I was borderline gonna crush up a Xanax and put it in his Gatorade bottle, because, like, the amount of people around the car, you know, like, I'm pretty relaxed about that, but obviously Greg is very protective. So, um, I think this year it's probably going to be even crazier. I think we're going to get ropes. I think it'd be, it's a good, good year we're, for ropes this year. No, I got the, we got stanchions, <laughs> stanchions now. We got stanchions. <laughs> and, uh, and it's going to, it's, it's going to, it's such a fun time, um, you know. Hey, William. Hi, William. Um, I, I, it's just, it, it really is. And I mean, true Ghostbusters fan, I'm 40, it's crazy that's 40 years. That is crazy. And you know, and that's part of this prod, you know, going back to the, the interview sessions and the Ecto, sure. that, that's what we want to hear about. We want to hear about, you know, 40 years of Ghostbusting. Like for me growing up now, I'm, I'm born in 85. So it was after the movie came out. So I got hooked on the cartoons, like a lot of people did. Mm -hmm. So like the new movie being a type of cartoon-esque episode, you know, I don't want to say spoke to me, but like, it was cool to see that. Yeah, I thought it was definitely that, because you had Janine suited up. Yeah. You had Ecto ripping it around the entire time, which is every single episode of RGB. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. So, with all different kinds of upgraded uh, mm -hmm. equipment. You had a cute Slimer storyline. It wasn't Slimer, you know, speaking and gurgling like in the cartoon, but there was still ah. a presence. So that's right. Into that. well, while we're talking about my guy Slimer here. He's right there. He's well, on. Slimer, just saying, when, instead of having podcasts open the trap, you should have had this guy open the trap. Oh, I and mean, then you really would have had some RGB action. So, I mean, he ate the Possessor. Right? I love that. I love that. Great. So, That's like, great. are we yeah. going to get, like, a red Slimer from the cartoon Ooh, in the next movie, right? Oh, so like, interesting. You know, who knows what uh, what might happen, but... Um, but yeah, you know, I, and, and like I said, that's why taking on this fan project, but listen, if Ghost Corp and Sony want to send some people our way to interview, I'm not going to be opposed to it. You know, I mean, hey, yeah. Hey, so like I said, if you know, <laughs> anyone out there is watching and, and you know, you're part of the creative or part of any of the Ghostbusters, uh, film and everything, more than welcome to come in the car. We have some, we have some folks, uh, um, notable Ghostbusters fans that we'll be announcing shortly, but. Uh, but yeah, so going back to it, I want to hear from everybody. Send me an email. Just say, hey, listen, this is what Ghostbusters mean to me. And then we want to get you in the car. We want to film an interview so you have a piece of Ghostbusters history. You know, your ghost tour. You take home. You'll have it forever. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty awesome to do. So. Um, and that's going to be featured on our social medias, right? So you know, not not only do you get the interview, but we'll put it, you know, on our channels. So. Yeah, you get to see that content. Oh, hey, shout out to Andrew Black. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, is Andrew there? Yeah, you just swing. Hey Andrew. Hey, 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 EHP Labs. I think we're actually the storage unit for all of the EHP merchandise at this point. So, uh, do we yeah. have any more drinks? I never, I never, I got one can. Oh no! Yeah. So we have more of the T-shirts than the cans, but you know what? Andrew, you need to hook me up, mate. Yeah, the uh, the those limited edition uh, frozen apple flavors are in vitamin shops now, or oh. at ehplabs.com, or uh, cool. whatever their website may be. I don't know it offhand, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, big, big, big. Uh, uh, we're getting it again. What's the email address? Ecto on NJ. <laughs> I'm gonna go get, I'll go, I'll go get it. Dot get the com. Sign. Is that it? Yeah, you it's know, a sign, Matt. Yeah, well, I think there's two signs, so we just hold them here, because, you know, like, you know, we have to... Suck, suck in the guts, Suck guys. in the guts, right? Or the gross, but we have the table. Speaking of my shout out to the HP Labs, because we're, we all really need to go on a weight loss journey, so maybe we'll all start doing the, uh, the whey protein, the pre-workout, and really... Uh, there it is. Oh, we got more questions. What do we got? Here it is. We made the Ecto Core from the Cranford premiere. This guy right here. Uh, yeah, so I, I spent Back hours. Gym, baby. Right, Here we go. Yeah, it's that uh, street cooler. What you know about that? Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, uh, I, I boxed all of those um, Ghostbusters treats and I jarred all of that ecto cooler myself. My kids helped a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, that, was, that was a lot to take on, but I hope you enjoyed it if you did, if you did uh, purchase it. And this is the address, so if you're interested in everything Nick's just talking about, either getting a, Are we backwards a free on, ride... Are we backwards on all the screens?
screens with we'll the... We'll be backwards adjust. on the live, unfortunately, for Instagram. Let's just see. It is backwards. But on YouTube, it will be the right way around. No. Either way, I mean, it's just like the handle. It's in the bio link in uh, my Instagram profiles, Ecto1NJ. I'm going to type it into chat here. I'm just saying hello to everyone that's saying hello as we're coming through. People want to know what's going on with the Ecto-1A build. Oh, that's that's uh, Division of Ecto-Tech right there. You, uh, you <laughs> can stay, stay tuned after your live stream for Ecto-1A after dark. Oh, oh my gosh. I have no or, idea what or, kind of content that is, Or folks, don't. So. Or don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what happens sometimes at the shop after I leave, but... Uh, but well, yeah. We have a noise ordinance in this town, so not that much stuff can go on. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're probably going to get yelled at just from laughing too loud. Yeah, that's that's so. that's, that's true. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, okay. the, the other thing that's really cool about this place right here. So, um, I get requests all the time that people just want to see the car, right? Maybe you don't have, you know, maybe Ghost Tours isn't in your budget, or maybe you just don't have the time to drive up to the city. Um, so what's really cool about this place right here, and I'm ho I'm shooting for an early summer type thing, is that you're actually going to be able to come here and check the car out. Um, so we have memorabilia. As you can see, we have plenty of arcade games back there. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be a fun place to just hang out. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. Uh, Got to get some floors done, and uh, you know what? There's that other movie car coming here soon too so you're not just going to see an ecto one folks you're going to see hopefully a wide variety of different movie cars and, yeah. and i just did a poll on my youtube uh, that, about, I, about what you better be going in the right direction i'm going in the right direction okay. don't worry. And, and to ask people what their other favorite fandom okay was. other favorite okay that's fine their other favorite fandom and um i'm just going to say that the car that's related to that fandom was the fandom that came up oh top, good as yeah. everyone's Next favorite fandom, certainly. It's definitely going to be some kind of flashback. This. I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I'm sticking 80s here, but uh, it's very much 80s. Yeah, it's um, or 50s, or 50s, <laughs> or just got a or 2018, or 2018, or whatever you. I care about 20, 25. Lewis, Causey, no, 2015. 2015. It was 2015 because the Superior. Cubs were like in the World Series the year before or after something. That's right. So yeah, so one of those. One of those times, but uh, I promise you, uh, you will not be disappointed. Not only seeing the Ecto, but the other stuff that I have planned for this place. So, totally. um, yeah, that's, uh, again, I'm thinking early, early summertime. Uh, we'll be Sweet. ready to go for that. So, um, get excited about that, too. That's uh, some fun stuff. Definitely. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, we have the workshop there. People are going to be able to come here and actually take a look at how the cookie gets made. Is that the same? The I, I, see, I see some cars getting recommended, but how do you know we already don't have those cars? What cars? What cars are they recommending? Uh, Starsky and Hutch Torino, the A-Team van. Maybe we have those already. You don't even know. Uh, that's a good point. Once we do uh, an unveiling here, you never know what's going to come through here. I mean, we're going to keep it fun and iconic. That's going to be the word for the cars. Iconic. iconic. Yeah. So, and then, hey, listen, come October, obviously the Ecto-1 and J will be out there. The 1A will be rolling. Might be another project Ecto over there. Frozen Empire, who knows? Who yeah. Knows? Yeah. Maybe that one will have air conditioner because that'd be great. It'll need to need some air conditioning replicate this year. The Frozen what Empire. What was it today? Experience. 80? 80 degrees? It was hot today. Yeah, today would not have been an ideal day for a, uh, a ghost. <laughs> <Well, that's more. laughs> Between the fumes and the heat. Yeah. That's, uh, that yeah, you have cool. a question here, Nick. It says, will, will there be a reservation to come and see the shop? Uh, yeah, so uh, basically uh, we'll have the website launched by then. You'll be able to uh, make a reservation to come check it out. Um, and then you stay as long, well, I mean, you stay until the, no the noise ordinance kicks us out, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I or want... Or you just have to whisper. Yes, like this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, 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 I have a few things planned, not just the arcade games, but some other fun interactive stuff here. Um, but yeah, uh, again, just follow my Instagram page. You'll, you'll be seeing it probably in the next few weeks, you know, an estimated date of when it's going to get going and some of the things that we'll have here. So, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun for sure. Yeah, definitely. Now I see family trucks are on there. What if I got that too? It's kind of what's in the collection. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, listen, here's how I do this guys. Uh, Ecto one was the first, but I basically just ask my kids, I show them pictures of movie cars. <laughs> And if they're like, Dad, let's do this, I'm like, all right, we're going to do that one now. So that's pretty much how I go about, you know, I don't want to say researching it, but, you know, basically getting the approval. The kid's audience, though, is, you know, that's the right audience for research right there. Yeah, no, I mean, if my kids like it, I'm game, and uh, I just want to bring it to life. 
Yeah. So, you know, you never, yeah. you never know what's... Uh... We have another reservation question here. Sure. Since uh, you do the Egon snacks on the tour, the question is, will reservations for the shop tour come with free beverages in the thermos and free balloons for the kids? <laughs> <laughs> if you knew how many Twinkies, Crunch Bars, and Cheez-Its I have over there right now, uh, I'm going to spend my life giving them away. So yeah, sure. If you come by the shop, you are more than welcome to have plenty of Ecto Cooler. I'll make it right here, homebrew for you if you stop by. What do you mean so. the Twinkies I just ate? Oh, come on, man. Sorry. I'm just saying. Well, I was hungry. You're like Adam Sandler and clicked it. <laughs> As a, you know what, though? Yodels. You're, you're gonna, Any yodels in there? No yodels. We'll work on that. But you know what? Uh, speaking of EHB Labs and healthy living, right? So, like, I'll be running the New York City Marathon again this year. But I'm just going to be Team EHP, right? So, if anyone out there wants to join the New York City, wants to run the New York City Marathon, let me know. Because we'll train. What day is the marathon? It's the first Sunday in November. Oh, I'm, I'm not around that day, sorry. Oh, you're in Liverpool visiting yeah, family? I am, yeah. Mm, you know, this guy's always doing something. Wait a minute. Oh, wow, that's right after peak season for us, too. You know, because October shuts down, Halloween. Well, that weekend so I run a marathon. During right? the marathon, does tea time fall into that? Because if it does, he definitely can't go. Well, we can drive the car through the streets and we can mm -hmm. like put a little like you know lead on the back leash and you can like hold on to it. That's some real vacation stuff. Run by the side of the car. That's how uh -huh. you can get your training in. So you won't be driving the car, you'd just be running by the car. You can be like the ghost jogger. Uh, I will be. He would be. I would be by <laughs> sucking those fumes in. If he passes out, you're uh, dragging him behind the car. I, it's like when you dropped the car off at my house for the Ghostbusters experience we did. And we were stood behind it. The engine was running. And, and my wife came up to us and she's like, you know, you don't need to stand here. We're just impervious <laughs> to the fumes. Like, oh, we thought this was normal. <laughs> I, I mean, we can do an ecto challenge to see how far I can run before I pass out behind the we car. We should do that. I yeah, you want to use this? This is a pace car. We can do that. People could. People would watch that. I think. I mean, it's like it's like the mallet for getting the views in Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. Well, like, they, how many times would the key collapse? Oh, the suffocation <laughs> gets the views. Yeah, right, wonderful. Suffocation. <laughs> suffocation gets the views. But you know, listen, I uh, I'm game for anything. You know, I'll get back into training sometime in the summer. So. Um, you know, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm planning on running Chicago. So maybe we take another trip out to Chicago. Mm. You know. You know, actually, yeah. the Wonderverse, I believe, had Ackroyd. They did, right? literally. They did. Yeah. On Monday. Monday. Yeah, I would yeah. have loved to have been out there with the car, but it, logistically, we had a tour Friday, just wouldn't work. But you know what? Again, you know what? Anyone knows Dan Ackroyd, he's more than welcome to come to the shop and hang out with us. Totally. Yeah. And he's an experienced driver of the Ecto. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm just saying. I, I Better than anyone, been. probably. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it was his car, it was his idea, really, wasn't it? The car. So, oh man, the, yeah. the original drawing of it, I mean, it was totally different than what we see here. It was black and yeah, the I black mean, and purple. The entire movie itself, like, <laughs> I feel like it was Harold Ramis and Ivan Reitman that took Ackroyd's script and, like, all right, dude, we're toning this down. Like, this is insane. No one's going to watch this. No one's going to a parallel dimension. Yeah, so like, we're and, not... that, and now we go to parallel dimensions all the time in yeah. Avengers movies. That's true. So, you know. Yeah, so, and. He was uh, ahead of his time. That, yeah, it's a fair point, because, like, you know, like, we were talking before you the pot, you know, but, like... Dan left early. The what? A, a, a lot of people were saying that, I guess, Ackroyd wasn't available to people that long at the Wonderverse. I heard it was less than 20 minutes, and he was also doing some PR stuff, oh. and then was making drinks behind the bar, and then kind of skedaddled away. Oh, so, yeah. Well, well that doesn't can anybody me. attest to that on here? Well, listen, if Dan ever wants to stop by, we'll happily serve cocktails with Crystal Skull. Totally. You know, uh, that's, we'll give you a wristband. It's you fine. We'll make, we'll make some adult <laughs> Ecto Cooler here. It's, it's all good. Ecto Cooler. I do know, I won't name names, but someone who might be related to me might have spiked their own Ecto Cooler at the, at the premiere. I don't know. <laughs> Just saying. So, so. That, that, that was not on the, the agenda list. Yeah, but, no, uh, it was not part of the official plan. Yeah. yeah hey, that was not you know, green lighted. That's okay, though. Yeah, let, yeah. let them enjoy themselves. <laughs> They've earned it. They've earned I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shout out a few folks. There's a lot of people talking here, and I'm not giving them any attention. Nerd Affiliated, hello. Hey, 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 hey we know them. We love and Nerd then, Affiliated. Uh, we've got a Ghostbusters fan who was hanging on for ages before we started. Welcome. It's good to see you. And obviously, we called out the Geeky Scouser. Stephanie Ferrante, hello. It's a grew up watching the original Ghostbusters, which is fantastic. That name rings a bell. Matt, when was the first time you ever saw Ghostbusters? Me, in the theater, as a kid, as a little kid. Mm. I uh, loved it. Was I the loved logo it. backwards? Because I know a lot of times on the European promotions, a lot of times the logo is backwards. 
Not in the movie. No, no. Obviously, I, I mean on the posters and stuff. You know what? I I don't remember that, but no. um. You know what? I have a UK version of like a storybook version of the movie. Mm. You know, because that was a big thing back then. They'd create this kind of. That was the same year as Gremlins, and in the UK, okay. Gremlins was given a 15 rating, which is a rating we don't have here in the US. Um, but it was 15, so we have a 15... 15 out of what? Before an R rating. Uh, oh! Oh, so okay. that was like TV 14? Yeah, so, uh, what, so when TV I was a kid, it, was, it I... was U, PG, 15, 18. And okay. 18 is the equivalent of an R, but 15 and 18 kind of bridge the R rating in this what? country. Why do you guys think that'd be so difficult? Hey, it's just, I don't, I can't tell you. <laughs> I can't tell you. But anyway, the point I was trying to make was Gremlins came out that year and it got mm -hmm. a 15 rating. All right, well. And, and so, um, the, and, and I really wanted to see it. The only way I could see it was they bought out this storybook and tape. Really? So I had this cassette tape with the story being read. And then photos of the, the movie. Really? And for years, that was the only way I was able to see it until it, you know, got out on VHS. And even at that time, in the UK at least, mm. home video was still a fairly new thing. It wasn't as advanced as it was here in the in the US. Yeah. So it took a while before I was able to see that movie. So that was the only way I had access to that content. That's kind of crazy. It was crazy, yeah. But that was obviously the same year. Yeah. That both those movies came out. But I had both of those storybooks. But now I'm going to go back and check to see if the logo is the right way around okay. or not on that book. Oh, I'll, yeah, let you know. I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah, that, that's always been a thing. Like, it was always reversed. Now, wait, what was Ghostbusters even rated here? Was it PG? I think it was. It, it was had, PG. I don't think we had PG 13 that yet. You don't have PG 13. That, that was. There was a reason. I mean, PG 13 kind of came out as a result of things like Gremlins. Like, so we ended up having the 12 rating in Britain, which is the equivalent of the PG 13. Oh, and that okay. the first movie in Britain to have the PG thirteen, mm. PG thirteen or twelve, as we had it, was Batman. The 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 um, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, we don't talk about that one because it buried Ghostbusters two. <laughs> What's the first time you saw Ghostbusters two, Matt? In America. Okay. I was on vacation. Ooh. I was on vacation, and we saw Ghostbusters two in a theater. I was in Texas, in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. I saw it, wow. and I remember it's the first time I ever had Cold Stone. Because we didn't have that in Britain, like like what? the ice cream place. Yeah, that, that was just that not... was around in the eighty, like the yeah, yeah, it was. And so I was on vacation. We watched it in the theater, and then we didn't have bubble gum cards. It, it was wasn't PG like a thing. thing. And so I bought all these bubble gum cards and then a collector's thing to slot them all into. And I still have all those original bubble gum cards and wow. Ghostbusters two at home. Oh yeah, There's I remember the shelf in there. Yeah, the yeah. yellow yellow packets and unopened. Yeah. Yellow packets, yeah. Shout yeah. out to Eddie like, Harkness for those cards. opened, but yeah. Oh, yeah. speaking of Eddie Harkness, I will get back to you with uh, some of the tour dates coming up. I know you had messaged me if I, I don't know. Yes, if you've you been asking yeah. about tours. Blame me. Yes, blame me. <laughs> the tour scheduling issue is on top of it. <laughs> so Seriously, no. uh, the best, just for ghost tours, if you are watching, Email is the best way. I, I don't set the schedule. Yes, ecto1nj at gmail.com. I don't set the schedule through uh, through Instagram. But I will say this. The website that we'll have booking for the shop here will also have slots available for ghost tours. Now, basically what I'll do is I'll select a couple weeks um, out of each month that we're doing it. Now, we're probably not going to do them in the summer because it's just way too hot. Um, but yeah, so you'll be able to actually go online and book and everything and uh, do it that way so you don't have to deal with waiting for me to get back to you via email. So, um, so I apologize if anyone has reached out, but that is the best way to go right now uh, before the website comes. So and I just, you can reach out to me and I'll talk. And just focus <laughs> on my true. YouTube. <laughs> text me. I, I typed the email address in wrong. I always put the underscore in. But it doesn't um, have an underscore. It only has an underscore on Instagram. Yes. I so should. I'm going to retype it for you. So we um, did get a comment. The original rating was PG. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, in the 80s, you could pretty much do anything you wanted. And like there was... Well, in America. There was nudity <laughs> in PG movies. There, there is something I want to talk about while I have two people that are as Ghostbusters knowledgeable as you two. Okay. Oh, oh, we're in trouble. Which Ghostbusters yes. is the most adult? I'm just saying, with the ghost floating over Ray in one, um, I think I think one. Yeah, yeah, I think the first one, because of that scene that was I remember being cut out on the TV version as a kid. Oh, it was. Yeah, certainly in Britain anyway. Yeah, but we we, we were a lot more careful. I think on TV we didn't have cable, um, and so everything was, you know, it's really interesting now. I'll watch a movie and you know 
my kids are a little bit older now, but when they were younger, I remember putting Goonies on for them and going, oh, let's watch Goonies. Yeah. And then I had no idea there was all that swearing in it. Oh, yeah. Because it was on That's the TV. made it fun. On the, t- <laughs> on the TV version, there was no swearing. And so the, that scene, the, the kind of dream sequence that Ray has mm. with yeah. the ghost, that we, was not in we, the in Which the I still don't really understand how it fits into the storyline, and but, you know. And, you know, the thing, too, like, we were talking... Uh, about movies now I think the fandom right the Ghostbusters fandom is more geared towards like the cartoon version so like critics pan this movie which doesn't shock me because they're looking for a movie to be like the comedic genius that was Bill Murray, Aykroyd and and Ramis but like that's not what the fans I think want now like it's great that they were in it and like Bankman had some fun lines in there Um, he's he's seen with the flying monster one of the best it's from Kelly, it says, the ghost job was cut out of on American TV. Yeah. <laughs> See, okay, so I'm glad, I'm glad it wasn't just me, but yeah, I remember. The ghost job. There was, there was a number of things cut out, and then, it's like the, the, the classic thing on British TV, like, you know, when people were getting upset, they were calling everyone a melon farmer, and I thought that was like a genuine, mm. you know, like, insult in America. You melon farmer. <laughs> I have literally <laughs> never heard that. No, no, <laughs> yeah. Die Hard. Yeah, yeah. Had a lot of melon farmers. Oh, yeah. Die- I can imagine. Yeah. Man. Oh. Yeah. That's uh, yippee ki melon farmer. That is. <laughs> that's the best they could come up with was melon farmer. Hey, I remember it. It was hilarious. What, what about on TV uh, when uh, he's talking to Peck and he calls him Wally Weck? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so there's some there's some comments here. Um, first of all, Nerd Affiliated loves the fact that you're holding a huge wrench, Nick. Size does matter. <laughs> this is this is the size of the wrench. You never know what kind is, of lugs you're dealing with. This is what, like you know, when you get home, you relax in your overalls and and you know just cuddle a large wrench. This yeah. is how things go down. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just moving on, <laughs> moving on. I'm trying right, to keep it PG. Right the live stream coming on. You know. I'm working on stuff. So that's what was <laughs> happening. I, I threw brakes on my truck. Ecto on a put me through the uh, put me through the ringer today. But that's back on the ground now. <laughs> Ready to roll. I'm trying to keep it twelve for the experience. Well, explorers. Thank you. I'm trying you to keep, keep it twelve. Keep I keep the rating UK twelve. That's right. UK twelve. UK twelve. So the, and then nerd affiliate is asking, what's your dream non-car nerd vehicle? So like a vehicle. I'm assuming he means a vehicle from a movie, but there isn't a car. Oh, see, the thing for me is it's not from a movie. Go? Yeah, that's it's okay. Yeah, it's not from a movie, and it is one of the cars that I fully plan on putting together. It is <laughs> not the one that's coming here next, but for me, it's the Turtle Van. Like, Ghostbusters, Ninja Turtles, synonymous. Like, Saturday right. morning cartoons, that was it. So, like, this was always number one, but, like, Ninja Turtles was right. It's still in the film TV genre. Sure, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, the I'll... car that you that you mentioned that you said that you wanted that was not in that was Sweet Tooth from uh, Twisted Metal. Oh, yeah. If anyone yeah. has an ice cream truck that's all beat up, let me know, because I would definitely make a Sweet, Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth from yeah. Twisted Metal. I think the question is, it can still be a movie, but just not a car. So what vehicle I... that isn't a car? Yeah, the Turtle Van, to me, is just, like... There's there's one in LA. Um, that we need the I, bike with the sidecar, no? Ecto Z. They destroyed that thing. We need a side, We need a bike. With well, the do sidecar. we need an Ecto Z too? Yeah, we need everything. Ecto Z is a pretty easy one to do. Pretty yeah. easy. <laughs> uh, I mean, that yeah. Well, and Matt I, needs somewhere to put all his equipment. Too, I so do. Like, so that every time good. I turn up with these like containers, plastic containers of stuff, every cool. time. All I right. Go. So I answer. I gave my answer. Well, what about you guys? Um, I think the motorbike from Terminator Two. Yeah? Yeah, that's a pretty cool We could probably recreate vehicle. that yeah. really quick. Let's go on eBay right now and yeah. find out what we can buy. I want your clothes, your boots, <laughs> and your shoes. the 60s uh, bat cycle because I always used to send Burt Ward. Um, Adam West would hit the uh, button and then Burt bat Ward. Cycle. Bat Ward. And Burt, yeah. Ward, Burt Ward, he would just go fly it out the side. <laughs> how many, how many, I say the bat cycle. So let me ask you a question, though. About, you know, speaking, because I used to watch those episodes as a kid all the time. How much therapy do you think Burt Ward needed after filming that? Just having to put those tights on like all the time and then <laughs> like, just being whipped out of the Batmobile to the bat cycle? Uh, I don't know. I, mean, I think it was Yvonne Craig said like how much fun he was to hang out with like, oh, yeah? in between shooting. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, so that's, shout out to Yvonne Craig. She was Batgirl. I, uh, I mean, listen, a Batmobile. So, like people have talked to me about Batmobiles too. And yeah. like, for me, if I were to pick one, it's going to be the 89. Uh, obviously, 66 is beautiful, but like, 
89, even though, again, a better Ghostbusters 2. Like, Keaton, <laughs> that, like, that's cool. And the Batman yeah. Forever one with, like, the LEDs and stuff looks cool, but I would I would stay traditional to the 89. Yeah, that's the one that I remember going, wow, yeah. this car. And the bit where they, like, the, the kind of, the cannons come out the side, you know, the, the what do they call those guns that, that rotate? The rotating gun cannon. Yeah. And then they shoot, he shoots the square out of the wall and the car drives. Well, listen, if anyone has amazing. 260 grand to drop, there is one on, <laughs> on eBay right now, it's Streetside Classics. It looks beautiful. Okay, send us a super for 260 grand, please. There's a GoFundMe <laughs> in the link. There's a GoFundMe area. Yeah. I, uh, I think the highest a super can go is five hundred dollars. <laughs> Ven, you, listen, we'll post on Venmo's if you want the eighty nine bat. We'll chip in, but um, we'll go in. We're going on it together. All right, so I, I do have a question. Um, now that Frozen Empire is out, rank your Ghostbuster movies, fellas. Oh my gosh! No, don't give me that. Come on now. I mean, I'll go first if you okay, want. Okay, go on. You go. Okay. Um, and in chat, you, you rank them as well. I'll, I'll come back to some of these questions in a second. While we're pondering about that, Regina has a, has a comment here. Yeah, says, sure. I got the ultimate Ghostbusters family lineage. My mom was nine months pregnant with me during the original 84 movie. Yeah, GB2 was my first movie in theaters. Nick and mine yeah, as that's well. Nice. Too. Yeah. I was nine months pregnant with my child for Afterlife. So. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, that's that's so, very cool. We love that. The first time I remember seeing Ghostbusters 2 and Ghostbusters was I was the ring bearer at my aunt's wedding and she got me, for my ring bearer gift, she got me both in, uh, on VHS. So that nice. was the first time I actually remember seeing it, but I know I was in theaters for GB2. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, definitely. It's in some book that my mother had. Baby, baby books. Baby books, right? So, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, again, uh, all right. So the rankings then. Yeah, the rankings. Now, I, I have another question to piggyback. Are we including the 2016 one in this? And I think so, because I, I tell you why, I, I watched the, the video, and sorry if you're watching or you see this, I've forgotten your name, but um, I subscribed to his channel, he's the guy that played the truck driver at the end of the, um, of the movie, mm -hmm. in, the, in the kind of post credit scene, Yeah, did a great video just on talking about his Oh, experience. with the mini puffs? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and he didn't, he didn't know what he was auditioning for or anything, yeah. but they told him, and this is the official word from Sony, that it was the fifth in a series of movies. Oh, so okay. as far as Sony's concerned, that, at least that's from him, yeah. that, that tells me that they do consider it not canon, because I think it's like a different universe or a parallel universe is the way I see it. Yeah. Um, but, so I think you have to include it. All right, I, 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 gotta, I know where it's gonna be. I have to, <laughs> I have to stop you right there, right? So like, I listen, you know, I, I listen to the podcast and reviews in the movie. When did this word canon become a thing? Like. I hear ever. Well, what we can I know is when you get shot at. Seriously, well, where did, Canon cameras? Where did this word come from? Because I never heard it up until like three years ago. Well, I think I think it started to become a thing. And again, anyone in chat that wants to tell me how this became a, a thing, um, I think that as franchises or stories became expanded, mm -hmm. so. I, the first time I heard it was when people were talking about Star Wars and they were talking about... I figure those guys would start it. Yeah, <laughs> but when you had all these novels and books in that period when there was just three movies mm. and then all the other was comic books and novels and all that kind of stuff, Yeah, mm -hmm. there were questions about whether that content was canon and it became called the expanded universe so there was okay. a conversation about whether it was canon or not but when disney so bought, for ghostbusters that would be like the idw comics right like exactly yeah and 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 but nice. then when disney bought the franchise and started making new movies they made a very clear delineation about all the content that had come before that was in that kind of oh, okay. space and they called it legends so it wasn't real but they have drawn from some of that content yeah, uh, Re Re Regina just uh, made reference to your book on tape. She said she vividly remembers GB book on tape as a kid. There you go. I believe the sound to tell the page was Slimer's growl. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Hope you still have it, because I've never seen one. A throwback for That's Ghostbusters awesome. that I remember as a kid was there was a real Ghostbusters color forms. There was Turtles ones okay. and there was Ghostbusters, so they were like adhesive figures where you could put them on the page and move them around I do recall and then they would restick. I had the uh, I had the Ghostbusters coloring books. Mm. I still I can see one in there. I, think. I, I still yeah I'm out. <laughs> and they said color in, in between the lines. So there's an answer on Canon here. Michael Timms who's on hot welcome Michael says he first heard uh, Canon for Star Trek and again that makes sense okay. because Star Trek 
So the next generation. The next generation expanded the universe. So we had the, the original series, then the movies, which stayed in that timeline, and then next gen jumped forward. And Star Trek's got so many shows now that are all canon. Yeah. And again, I, Jim, Jim and I are both Star Trek fans, Jim Meritado from Extra Plus, and we talked about this not on the podcast, but mm -hmm. a long time outside of it. And that's a very complex fandom because you, you try writing new content for yeah. something that has a huge amount of content that's canon. Mm. It's very, very difficult for writers not to screw up, which yeah. is why when J.J. Abrams started again, yeah. he just said, we're in a different timeline, same characters, different universe. Yeah. Well, listen, if there was anyone out there who heard the word canon, she's like, what does that mean? It said 1999, there was a comment someone said, but I was thinking about something being canon as Back to the Future, because all three movies have to kind of stay like yeah. that. They do all the clothes. And Back all to the, the Future. So Nerd Affiliate has a great answer. Thank you, Nerd. This is fantastic. So from Google, Google says the word canon comes from the Greek word kanon, which means rule or ruler. It comes from the Hebrew Greek word meaning cane or measuring rod. So it's a way of measuring or saying that this is official, I guess, is the where, where that's come from. So I think it means what's rule or what are the rules of the universe. So like the le so it's from a Greek word. So like Gilkanon, <laughs> right? Not like canonizing a saint. I, I think. That yeah, yeah, cool. maybe. That's are we, that's are fascinating. We going biblical on this? Hey, oh, we're, we're not, going not, over. not with this guy. But anyway. Uh, uh, so, so let's rank our movies. We had a few minutes. Everybody rank your GB movies. I'll go I've, first. And I've got some ranks here too from the chat that we'll share in a second. Sure. Yeah. You Ghostbusters, wanna... Ghostbusters 2. All right. Ghost... Well, are we starting at the bottom or are we starting at the this top? Is, this is from the top down. All right. So GB2, numero one. GB2 is my numero uno. Okay. Then the original. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very close thing. Mm -hmm. And then I, I have to say Frozen Empire. Okay. Then Afterlife. And then... 2016. <laughs> yeah, and I'll give and I'll give my two cents about uh, about ATC. I didn't like it that the characters from the OGs were not the, themselves. They should have been themselves. Yeah. And I also didn't like it that they didn't have an original Ectomobile. You know, everyone knows I'm all about the Ecto. They <laughs> honestly, they they lost me. Um, yeah, and that's what we share is, is the love for the Ecto. It's like it when that first trailer came out, and I saw that amber light. And no disrespect to anyone who likes that. But, you know, it's cool that they changed it, but like people who were like just waiting for Ghostbusters 3, like we were in the 90s, yeah. right? And like you yeah. kept hearing, it's gonna happen, and then Bill Murray's like shredding the script and sending it back to Dan Aykroyd because he's not <laughs> gonna do it. So, like, you just you wanted the, the original, and then and I, I think that's what lost it for and me. And I think also what happened was, and you know, we could get into a long conversation about marketing because there's been some discussion. I had some discussion on, on Extra Plasm about this. about the approach to marketing something sure, and, the yeah. way, and the way that Sony chose to market this movie. Mm. Um, but there, for that movie, I remember the first trailer that dropped gave you the impression that this was a sequel. Not it definitely in the universe. Yeah. And so I think that that is what kind of tipped, every, for me at least, I felt incredibly disappointed mm. that it wasn't a sequel and that it wasn't in the same universe. And that's what I loved about Afterlife, that it was in universe and it kind of hit it all the canon. Way. Yeah, it was kind of, it hit all the right notes for me. <laughs> but what I will say about Answer the Call, and then we'll get back to our ratings, is that taking it out of Ghostbusters and now having had other movies, mm. I dislike it less. Okay. Because, because well, I, yeah. I found it actually, I thought Act 1 and Act 2, it was a funny film. Mm -hmm. right? I laughed a lot in that movie. I laughed a lot out loud in the theatre. Then I think the third act kind of was just so, there were so many ghosts, so much CGI. So much CGI, yeah. So it was just, yeah. you know, and it, and it just felt like they, you know, needed to go big. Mm. But so you, wanted more big and, you wanted more practical effects for the final. Well, stuff. I just wanted more size emotionally than size graphically. You know mm. what I mean? Because it, there was no doubt they put a lot of money into it. No doubt that they, you know, there was a lot of great work. And again, you see anyone that makes any movie, right? Yeah. Huge kudos, you mm -hmm. know, no, no attack on the effort that goes into it, but it just was too much. And so it didn't have the kind of same weight and meaning to me. And like all of those four actresses are very talented. They're very funny. Um, and honestly, 
Surprise Maze is hilarious. I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys out there, if you're watching, if you're a hardcore goes, you kind of didn't give it a chance. Like people hated that oh, movie. I know. Before, so like, I'm not I, even saw it. I, 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 I was, I was not like, I was like, okay, let's see what this is. I saw the, yeah, I was disappointed. I didn't overly love it, especially like at the end when like yeah. she's punching a ghost in the the, yeah. the bread basket. Yeah. But like, yeah. So you have someone that was saying that the video game should have been canon as well for everything, and I have to agree with that. Oh, that's interesting. Well, yeah, because that was partly some of the story that was going to... It's really the Ghostbusters 3 that we never got, that, that video game. Definitely. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 it's possessed. I, again, that's... Oh, no, the mayor's possessed. Yeah, again, yeah. I mean, <coughs> into 2009, like, everyone thought that was it. Like, that's what we were getting. Bill Murray yeah. did the voiceovers, like, hey, we're never getting anything else. So Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and it was a great game, and... Um, but yeah, I, so I, I would agree with you. I think now that we've got two more from the original lineage there, mm -hmm. people probably will lay off ATC. Um, yeah, I think so. And you know, it has some redeeming features. It just, it, it, I think the biggest problem for me was it was not a continuation. And I think that's yeah. what it needed to be. I yeah. liked it, but that it was they funny. Had some, it was funny. There were some extreme Ghostbusters vibes in there because they had a, that oh, kind of trap. The yeah. trap looked like that. The packs. Yeah. But then the rest of it, like they're in, you know, their firehouse was the restaurant, which is funny, but not like at the same time. Something about same wontons, right? Same the yeah, wontons. yeah, the wontons, no so, wontons. And listen, I mean, Holtzman was a great character that came out of that movie. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, uh, and the, the equipment too. Like, that's the cool thing, right? It, it amazes me, like everyone about Frozen Empire is like, oh, look at the new equipment, look at the new equipment. You had a ton of really cool equipment totally. in, in ATC. And, people just did a lot of weight now. And, and people just hammered it. I'm like, all right, let's take the good that, stuff. You know? Yeah, the, I would have liked to see the original act up with yeah. the yeah. red domes, kind of like, what do you call it? Possess, possess, Possecto. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The red, the red domes um, all. The, but that was what it was in Extreme Ghostbusters. The tech, it was all the red, the red stuff. And the tech is one of the, certainly for me when I was a kid was one of the coolest things about Ghostbusters. And one of the things I loved about this most recent movie is the new technology. Like, sure. I love the the device for separating ghosts from haunted objects. Yeah, that yeah. was super yeah. awesome. And. I love what the was fact it, like six proton ones? Just yeah, yeah, they had like, you know, something that removed the ghost from the object was the first container, and then it went through the pipe, and then before it was put into the trap, there were a bunch of throwers, like, facing around. Now, I didn't ever see them activate in the way that they showed it, yeah. but I, some, we were chatting about this on a live, and somebody was saying that maybe they were there as a backup. Yeah. Oh, so just whatever happened thing, didn't, didn't work, and the ghost didn't. Kind of like an afterlife. It was over the. They bed. could trap it uh, in the proton stream. I mean, we got plenty of space for something like that. In here. Hey, yeah. you can build yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? I'll throw that out there too. If you guys have any suggestions for the shop, like if there's something that you'd want to see, I like to see the atomic pile, like in the bat cave. Uh, listen, <laughs> I, I, and I'm not sticking to just Ghostbusters because there's going to be other other fandoms represented here. But yeah. If there's something out there that you want to see in here, then you just let me know because. I'll run it by the kids, and if they like it, <laughs> then you're we'll, good. We'll put We're it in fine. here. We're fine. You're yeah. gonna have to make a case to Nick's kids. That's yeah. how this is gonna have to work. So listen, more people are giving their ratings here. Okay, okay let's hear um, So uh... <laughs> I'm curious to see if everyone has answered the call higher up on the list. So let's see, let's see. So Rebecca, hi, thank, welcome, welcome back. And I should say hi to Rambling Nerd, and hi to Brandon. Thank you, folks. Brandon was asking, how do you get invited to Ghostbusters movie premiere? We could do a whole live about that. <laughs> how did we get invited? Uh, I, well, know. I mean, look at the car. This is how. Yeah, that's these guys it, right? That's invited. your ticket, right there. <laughs> this is this is how it happens. So this is what you need to do. Um, but Rebecca says um, her order is Ghostbusters, uh, then Afterlife. So okay. sorry, Ghostbusters two. Mm -hmm. Oh no, sorry, Ghostbusters. It's just that you put one, two, three. I can't read properly. As people that watch my lives know, I need better glasses and a bigger screen. Uh, Ghostbusters, then Afterlife, then Frozen Empire, then the 2016, and then Ghostbusters 2. Ooh, controversial. I like it though. I like okay. it. An aristocrat. Huh? I like the controversialness. Langdon says, what do we think of 2016? I think we just shared that. Yeah. Um, RB Punk 87, welcome. Hi. Um, oh, that way. I rank right. mine uh, GB2, GB1, Frozen Empire, Afterlife. And then 50 piles of crap for 2016. That's what I said. Uh, that's funny. You know, you know to, to, not to keep going on about ATC, but what you had said, right? So, like, initially, Sony had marketed it as 
a continuation. Yes. Because I'm going to share yeah. a quick story with you because we'll move on. But when I was getting the dimensions for this, before this was built, I flew out to Culver City. Right. And I booked a studio tour because I knew this was, I knew the original was there. So they, they took you on, the, on a tour and they showed you an upcoming trailer for a Sony movie. And sure enough, it was Answer the Call. Right. And it led with 30 years ago. Right. Exactly. So, exactly. It, so I think what happened was, because all of the folks out there were like, oh, we can't wait to see this movie. Uh, and they hammered it. Sony panicked. And they're like, whoa, 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 no, no, we were just kidding. It's not really a continuation. And I think the marketing and, and all of that, I mean, it really, you know, it, it, it kind of hurt the movie because they, they panicked and they're like, no, it's not, even though it was supposed to be. So, And I, I also think that that reaction, and again, I by, by the way, I mean, you mentioned this earlier, Nick, I think that the overtly negative reaction yeah. and overt sexism it, as part of that reaction was totally unnecessary. I, over, I the, agree over with the you. top. Um, whatever you thought of the film. But I think that, that what did happen, one of the great things that happened as a result of the reaction to that movie was that Sony made such an effort to engage with the fans after that. Yeah. And, you know, True. the kinds of things that have happened to us because of this is, I think, a direct result of that. So you have to kind of give that film credit yeah. for that. I, absolutely. <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a turning point. Uh, you know, Ghost Corpse gets put in. Um, and yeah, no, absolutely. I think Sony and Ghost Corpse have been much more welcoming of all the fans. And, yeah, they've been um, amazing. Yeah. And, so, and, yeah beyond and, any and, other fandom, I think. Yeah. And, and Jason and Eric and, and Gil, they've done a wonderful job about including the fans in there and again they know that's who's gonna go see these movies and that's important so shout out to all those guys for doing that and uh yeah so we'll we'll lay off answer the call but um, so rambling nerd says it's um gb1 afterlife gb2 and frozen empire in that order chris cook says uh, he only put four yeah didn't i think people are just ignoring 2016 <laughs> chris cook welcome says one three four and two Always felt New York City was less a character in two. Oh, what up, Chris? My boy down there. Interesting. I, he gave me one of the cells over there, so yeah. shout out to Chris. Thanks for and hanging then, out with us. Eddie Harkness is saying, um, if you watch the cinematic of the Ghostbusters game, you get a nice Ghostbusters 3 replacement for 2016. That's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Real but fake says Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, Afterlife, and 2016 doesn't exist. Uh, <laughs> um, Ghostbusters fan says Frozen Empire, uh, Wow, that's awesome. Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, Afterlife 2016. Okay. Is ranking. So Frozen Empire first. Yeah, Frozen okay. Empire first. And I've heard a few people say that, actually. I'm liking it way more as um, more, more that I watch it, because I'm catching way more awesome yeah. stuff that's in it. Jim Maritato from Extraplasm puts Frozen Empire up the top. Uh, so. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Um, my, so, I mean, for me, I'll start at the bottom, you know, because that's just how go I do things. So, like, I mean, again... I'll take ATC for what it is, but it's going to be at the bottom of my list there. Okay. You know, so, um, then I, I just, oh man, that's tough. It's hard, isn't it? It is. I find it hard ranking movies. It is. I would put, um, I would put Ghostbusters 2 number four. Okay. I don't, you know, it's just, I don't know. Um, and then I would put, uh, Frozen Empire and then Afterlife and then the original. That's how okay. I would do it for okay. me. So. Um, so I'm going to say similarly, I, I think, that, and I'm just going to give a reason why I find it really hard to rate movies in yeah. this way, is because my opinion changes as I change. So We movies, evolve as human beings. Well, we do, and I, know, yes. I sound very highbrow here, but <laughs> genuinely, like, stuff's going in your life that's different, mm -hmm. and suddenly it makes a movie that maybe wasn't high on your list be higher because you get it in a different way. So you're saying it's just going to resonate with you differently. Yeah, totally. Like, m like movies that had kids in going through stuff, you know, like didn't really resonate with me before I had kids. Sure. No, and I now I have kids. I totally like, get that. You're like, oh no, that child. Yeah. <laughs> it's a totally <laughs> different experience. And so it makes so, you. So now you can't watch Willy Wonka anymore, right? <laughs> the original. Right, it depends on how I'm feeling about my kids. Okay, I was going <laughs> to say, as someone else who has kids, you could be like, yeah, you're stuck now. Oh, <laughs> so Violet. It could go like Violet. Violet. Um, but, but no, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can, you know, listen, it's like anything else in life. It, you, your perspective changes as you yeah. know, or so, yeah. But I, I would say, lately, Afterlife has been my favorite. Mm -hmm. Lately. But it's a very close between Afterlife and Ghostbusters for very different reasons. The, yeah. 
But I love the story arc of the kid discovering that they're a Ghostbuster. I mean, that reminds me of what I wanted as a kid, yeah. to discover that I was actually a Ghostbuster. So that's cool. So those two I put kind of neck and neck, mm. and then I put two and, and Frozen Empire together. And for different reasons, I think there's some, I think Ghostbusters 2 is a little uneven as a movie. Mm. It's got some fantastic moments. Yeah. And then it kind of almost leans too far in occasion. You're just like, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, why did you need the Statue of Liberty to get into that museum? There's yeah. no reason. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I mean, for, for It's just a cool scene. They I, needed something large walking through the streets of New York again. They needed something as over the top as a Stay Puft Marshall. It, yeah, yeah, precisely. And so th so for that reason, it was, it was good. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and answer the call. I don't even put it in the set. Like I like it for different reasons, but mm -hmm. I don't really consider it because it's not it's not canon, right? We just talked about that. So, <laughs> so it's funny that you said that about the Statue of Liberty. So maybe a good idea for the next Ghostbusters is that would have been a good opportunity for the Ecto Two helicopter. Oh yeah, that's true. Because well, I mean, right in the top. Honestly, I'm just I'm really happy with Frozen Empire. They just you know paved a new path, right? There was no like. I remember talking to someone who had seen the storyboards and I'm like, just tell me there's no Vigo. And there's like, there's no Vigo. I'm like, oh, all right. Thank Vigo. goodness. Yeah, yeah because like, <laughs> I liked Afterlife a lot. It, it, leans, it leaned a lot into, I mean, you can, you can make the argument. It was basically Ghostbusters 1 with the, the end battle scene because they fight Gozer again. So, yeah. uh, so yeah. they leaned into that a lot, which I think a lot of the fans really embraced. Um, but but wait, I, wait, I, wanted, I thought that was the worst part of it. Even though I like it I, and I embrace it now. I, I agree with I you. I thought it was the laziest part. It's kind of like the prequel, the, sorry, the, the, the first Star Wars sequel, which was Force Awakens I liked, but having another Death Star type thing at yeah. the end, it's just like, really? They, they, Should they, we they, find something else? They leaned it, and listen, the story of, like you had said, Phoebe figuring out who she was, and like the introduction of Gruberson in the middle of nowhere, that yeah. was awesome. But and like her and podcast together, yeah. it's so funny. But like yeah. leaning into that yeah. nostalgia part, they went... Thank you, Kelly. I, I left the original viewing of Afterlife like, all right, that was a little too much, you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, but I'm so happy that Frozen Empire kind of just set its own course. Now, here's the thing, though, like, about people who don't like ATC, or they still don't like ATC. Yeah. Well, guess what? If you want Sony to keep pumping these movies out, you're going to get deviations from the originals now. Right, and they've got to do something different for the next one. And, yeah. and, and that's why we were talking about this before we went live. I think that the fact that there's a cartoon coming out is yeah. great. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. I think they have to be very careful with that. I think making something that appeals to kids and the fans yeah. is a challenging thing oh. to do. But I, I think if they can make that work, it will open the way for more movies. Well, I think you have a lot of loyal people to the original real Ghostbusters. So, like, right. I, in a way, like, when Answer the Call, you're, you're walking a fine line, not just on the movie side, but... For me, the cartoon was like, I'll still watch them to this day and just be entertained by yeah. them. Um, more Especially so, the earlier ones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the yeah. first few seasons. Yeah. The first, that great. first yeah. syndicated run, those first 47, 50 episodes. Yeah. I mean, the writing was fantastic. So, like, for me, I think I would judge that harder a new cartoon than I would a movie because I'll take the movies for what they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, like we had spoke before, the way it's set up, I would love to see them do like a, a live version of a Stranger Things, like an eight-part episode yeah. of Ghostbusters. I think that would be phenomenal. Like, I love Stranger Things. I think that was Rick Moranis' suggestion after Ghostbusters too. And I think they should. I mean, now we know. I mean, TV is such high quality now. Yeah. Compared to you know in the eighties. You know, you think about what Spider-Man looked like in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then what, you know, what TV shows look like now. Stranger Things is an amazing example. There's so many great shows with really high, high-end quality yeah. spent on them. I would love to see them busting a different ghost every week. Oh, and then not awesome. having to be a world-ending threat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, this house is haunted. We need to get rid of this ghost. Or, here's a mystery. There's a bit of detective work involved. Like those elements, like the technology mixed with the business of ghost busting, mixed with the idea of, oh, well, how do we solve this mystery? What spirit guide do we go to? Where do we find this stuff out in order to figure out the information we need to fix it? Which was what every episode really of real Ghostbusters yeah, was. Yeah, that's true. You know, and even though the solution was we just changed the polarity every every episode. Seriously, <laughs> that was literally the answer. Like, oh, we'll reverse the polarity. Like, okay, didn't you do that like the last five episodes? Yeah. But 
But I was trying to figure out where it ended up because is it backwards or is it the right way? We didn't yeah. ever know. Oh, did they just? Yeah, did they make them? Yeah, go on. So uh, you had a rebuttal to your comment about Ghostbusters oh. 2 about how the Statue of Liberty was unnecessary. It said it motivated the entire city to bring positive vibes to different. That Vito. is true. Yes. That's true. Time You're time right. Time. You're right. It was a, a something way, decent, something a bad. way to a symbol of a symbol of hope. To yeah. get to, to change the charge of the mood slime. They had to, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, too, the other thing about real Ghostbusters, it's I true. always remember watching, like, in two, they're like, like, Bill Murray's like, oh, I hope these things still work, and then Hal Ramis, like, they have a half life of 5,000 years. Yeah. <laughs> Every episode in the Ghostbusters. They're charging them. They, they, they're like, oh, it's got no battery. Well, like, that's the weird thing, isn't it, right? Yeah. You've got a, nu a nuclear accelerator. Why do you need. I, I, where's, where's the electricity necessity? Yeah, so, like, one of my favorite episodes, which I think is a lot of people, is Citizen Ghost, where Peter yep. tells the story about how their uniforms. And, like, they're fighting off. Well, they're not, because they're hiding from the other ghosts, but Ray's like, I gotta get that back. It's only got half a charge. I'm like, what happened in 5,000 years here? And I, I wonder if, I'm, I'm sure there's somebody listening now that like has looked into the science, because there is some, definitely some science around this. Maybe the charge is required for operating the... Go big. Go you know big. what I mean? Like, the, the like, reactor like that's inside You need a battery. The car needs a battery. Yeah, the start. Fueled by... Yeah. Yeah, so maybe... Okay. Maybe that's the reason. But I mean, yeah. but still, the, I, the the first run of real Ghostbusters before, well, what was his name? Joe Maduk? Or, or Joe Magic, yeah. Yeah, right. And Straczynski, mm -hmm. right? right? So like, I think the, Michael Gross was on there too. That's yeah. who designed the Ghostbusters yeah. logo. So like those guys, I mean, that original, and then they let them go, and um, this. The, I think they brought them back for Extreme Ghostbusters, though, right? They they brought them back, I believe, at the end of the run, but by that time, like. I, they canceled it because like moms are like witchcraft is no good. I, I forget why they canceled it. But the other thing too is like when they changed Janine in Real Ghostbusters. That oh, was yeah. that was so, that's when that's when it shifted to the more family friendly and you had those Slimer shorts. But that original syndicated run with the original Janine and the original story yeah, run, yeah. like you can't like, for me. It's that's my number one cartoon. But right next to it's uh, the original Batman. Uh, from the 90s. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Those, the animated series? Oh, the animated series. Like, Mark Hamill as the Joker? Uh, it's like, as because this is my fandom here, but like the Adventures of uh, the uh, uh, animated series was like phenomenal. Like yeah. I, that, they, they won Emmys and all that. So, um, but the writing on the original syndication of Real Ghostbusters was so good. And I hope that's something that we get. Um, yeah, we need good stories. We need, you know, and again, it'll be interesting to, to learn is this going to be a canon? Back to canon, Jeez, right? Is, but but is it going to? No, I, I get is it, it going to carry it. on? Or like, are they going to pick up from where this movie left off, or are they going to fill in the gap between? We're missing some, a lot of Ghostbusters two information, right? Is it? Where's the slime blower? Yeah, do they set it? Do they set it back with the original OGs? Well, the the other thing too is that you know Frozen Empire didn't address was you know um, not Phoebe. What was her mother's name? Callie. Callie, yeah. Who, who is who is her mom? Yeah, that was yeah, they, never, they, they, clearly they not Janine. They, they, I mean, no. so like the Rocky franchise started a whole movie about some illegitimate kid that Apollo Creed had, and they delved into that, but they didn't even touch that in Frozen. And I was fine with that. I didn't. I don't have well, to. Clearly, know. it was someone that was after Egon's epidemic. Ah, right nice. There. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so yeah, it's um, it's interesting, but. Um, you know, I remember when they announced, like, they had that uh, Ghostbuster Con or whatever it was. I remember reading online, and again, this could be conjecture, but they were saying it was going to be, like, Ecto Force and set in 2045 in San Francisco. Yeah, we've and, seen some, even some imagery of that, right? There's yeah. been some, or, or even ghosts being main characters. Yeah. You know, which I, I mean, I mean, it might work, but I... No, anyway, I, I just I, want to see them trap ghosts. I don't want to see that's them... That's it. Yeah. That's what we want. We want to see them going out in the car, doing their thing. There's some, there's some interesting thing here. Rambling Nerds just talking about um, the third movie, like we were, and saying that, you know, maybe we don't need the OGs at all in the third of these new movies. Yeah, I agree. We should move on with yeah. the new characters. Not, you know, Pat Oswalt can take a role, could be the kind of Ray character. Winston has his R&D, you know, and... 
you know, those guys, maybe, maybe we still need Winston, maybe we still need Ray, but not in the same well, heavy, heavy I, way. I, I do think Ernie Hudson and Dan Aykroyd would be game for another one. I think oh, it's, totally. uh, that's probably... And they awesome. were fantastic in it. Yeah. No, I, I, Ray, Ray was one of my favorite parts in the movie. Yeah. His, his, his scenes were fantastic. Yeah, so. but, um, but yeah, I, I agree. You don't need to lean on them anymore because you have this coming-of-age story of Phoebe, and, um, and I think Paul Rudd was very funny in this movie. Um, and now we can really kick it up a notch because the next one, the kids will be a little older, so he doesn't have to be as yeah, yeah, e exactly. So yeah, exactly. I mean, again, the, the sky's the limit, you know, whatever they do creatively there. But um, but you know what? Just keep going to buy tickets, so we get another one. That's the key. Right? Yeah. Did you yeah. feel like there was anything missing from Frozen Empire, or something you would have liked to see? I, I would like to have seen. And I've talked about this before, and people that know me on the stream will know it. I've said this before. I would like to a meatier third act. So I'd have liked yeah. what, what I call the alien and aliens model for the movie, right? You have a first act, second act, a third act. You think everything's good at the end of the third act. And then there's a little sneaky fourth act mm. where the bad, eye, bad guy's not dead. Yeah. Which is basically what they did in Ghostbusters, right? They think they've killed yeah. Gozer. And then the and then the Stay Puft It's like a soft thing. And, yeah. and it's, it's okay. not quite as intense as proper fourth act movies. Like, obviously, Aliens is an example. That whole... The fourth act is the best sequence in the movie with the like load lifter and the yeah. and the you know the the mother alien just one of the best scenes ever and and that's a fourth act and again if you weren't from I remember seeing that probably younger than I should have done um, <laughs> that's a movie was that a fifteen rate when you were ten <laughs> I think that movie was an eighteen <laughs> and and uh, that film you know shocked me. The fourth act. Yeah. I was like, what? The alien mother isn't dead? Yeah. Sorry if you've not seen that movie, but it is old now. If you haven't, then you know you can't really expect me to hold on to those uh, spoilers. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Spoiling it for you. <laughs> so as far as Frozen Empire goes, I would have loved to see a ghost busting montage with Ecto-1 with the new crew busting more ghosts. So that could have been just prior to the sewer dragon scene. They could have came in, you know, guns ablaze and then the sewer dragon thing obviously was, was a bad moment. So you could have came in yeah. there, they're really, really, really successful. Mm -hmm. And then that's their shortcoming and then they're in Peck's office. I figured they need a little bit more ghost busting. Or all the scenes when they're leaving Phoebe behind, there should have been. Showed I would have liked the, to see yeah. Carrie Coon and Paul Rudd bust some ghosts maybe by themselves or throw podcasts in there without, yeah. you know, and just kind of mix it up a little bit more. Some people even said that they would like to have seen a a montage and you could have had a montage, sort of like a montage. with yeah. the busting going on mm -hmm. and then phoebe hanging out with melody more and more sure you, know, you could that you could have done that to show time passing yeah and and the trust growing but I, i'm not sure how much time was really passed in the movie it feels to me like it was only like a couple of weeks or maybe even a week and a bit of actual time that the movie passed and again gil Kennan would have to answer that question yeah um but it, it didn't give the impression that she was banned for that long. Yeah. Well, and that's the, 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 see, your point though is why I think it would be so good as like an eight episode series yeah. because you would get plenty of that. With a movie, it's, it's all compact, but yeah. you know, you talk about the rush third act, which I think everyone pretty much yep. came away from saying, is when she flips the proton pack, what was it, bronze? Uh, Copper or brass? Brass. 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 Yeah. That was like reversing the polarity in real yeah. ghost right there, you know? Yeah. And then you're taking down this mega god. Yeah. So, um, and for some reason, you need all, yeah. all the original Ghostbusters and Janine to flip a lever. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> and like, they're all helping. Which is like, what? They're all helping her hold the, uh, the proton stream, which was similar in Afterlife, how yeah. Ramus comes and helps her. So, like, the, I, I see what they were doing there, but. Uh, but all in all, like I said, it's a fun movie. I think a lot of kids enjoyed it. I think it'll do well once it's on streaming and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, yeah. And, and I'm- And people are agreeing, like they're saying, let's see a passing of the torch now. We're good with the OGs kind of moving into the background. And, and, and a few ideas about, about the cartoon, um, you know, just about how that might work. And, and I think that's why you didn't see a scene after the credits because I don't, I think they were waiting to see the reception of this movie to see where they were going to go on it. I, my view on the, I agree, it, the, the, the ending or that post credit scene doesn't seem to be very, like it was so clear what was happening yeah. at the end. I mean, there was two credit scenes, right? We wow. see the car driving, mm -hmm. then we see Zed Moore with the car, we see the scene with, you know, there's so much content yeah. that showed you where it was almost like a, that was a fourth act, yeah. right? Which was showing where it was going. But with this, 
it was very light, but what I, th my view, is that it's showing that there are ghosts going out into the world. Exactly. And, this and is I was just going to mention thing. that, 100%. Yeah. And so there's a bigger job to be done. So you done. didn't need as much of a kind of cliffhanger thing because it was right there in front of you. You saw yeah. that all the ghosts were released because the only ghost in the containment unit is Garaka. So yeah. that means that Vigo and Dozer and, and everybody like, else is out. Like, but maybe they, that's a TL. They didn't the trap, they didn't trap they Vigo. Didn't tra they shipped him back to whatever so, Carpathian he went back to his head. dimension. Yeah. Where's Gozer all this time though? Did they have what? She made it into a trap though, right? 50 traps. Or, yeah, that's true. She, she split she, into all these different traps. Ask Ben how many traps were out there. Oh, there was 110 traps. So okay, was, 110. And there so were spirit traps. If you go to the Adam right? Savage video, he shows all of those spirit traps. There's a spirit trap mod on my channel, by the way, folks. Now, we never answered the question from before. How did we end up at the premiere? Shout out to Eric Reich for letting go. us all be a part of the premiere. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, again, going back to Ghost Corpse, kind of embracing the fans. So, I mean, again, this helps this car here. But, um, but yeah, it was just, it's pretty cool. So, um, all right. I mean,. Uh, Anything else, fellas? Loads of stuff on here. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a people are writing essays for me. So a question for Ectotech. Francisco Silva is asking. Um, uh, wanted to know if you have any tips on fixing the frame of a Cadillac. We recently acquired a '64 Hearse and it has rust. Any tips? When the frame is rotted. Uh, that's the impression. Yes, I mean rotted frames, but a tough one. Mm, I'd, have to, I'd have to see it. Send, send me a DM. Yeah, so slip Send into Ectotech's DMs. <laughs> <laughs> Send him some pictures and he can help you out. Send me a message, we'll see if it's fixable. And that's on Instagram, at Ectotech, is where you want to go for that. Um, and then... Uh, it's much more convenient to have the comments. It's, it's helpful to yeah, see them. Yeah, we have them. comments here too. So I just and there's to lots, lot of people still giving their ratings. I'm really sorry, guys, if I didn't read your ratings, but I have, I have read them and... People are having their own conversation now because we've been ignoring them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Chat folks. amongst, um, talk amongst yourselves. Yes. Oh, we have we have a question. What, what went on with the rumors of Oscar being grown up as a Ghostbuster? Nothing. So no, not, yeah, no, yeah. there was nothing about that, and I didn't understand how. If you're gonna have a multi-billion-dollar corporation, how is Lewis not your accountant for Winston? Wow. Well, I mean, who does your taxes? I mean, some, somebody <laughs> mentioned that here and said that we really needed him. Being the finance and, guy for Zedemore. I mean, I would. So, I would and how do you not have Dana, who has been used and abused by the ghost world for the, the entirety of two movies? This this girl can't get out in, in a in a uh, flight suit and bust a couple ghosts. Yeah. She she couldn't have had an alien scene, a fourth <laughs> act. Where was Dana Barrett for the fourth act, Ghost Corp? Well, so you know there was an Easter egg for Dana Barrett. So in the scene, I saw a sign outside yeah. the uh, the library. That's she right. was on there. In the library sign, it mm -hmm. said cello performance, Dana Barrett. Of course. Um, so well, I'm glad she's still a practicing musician. There you go. You I know. want to see her and Oscar busting some ghosts. I'm going to bust together, stays together. I I feel like <laughs> though they want. Wanted to give Janine her due. Sure. You know, I think that's what they did. But, you know, and the other thing, too, and, and I said this to you, and I know I'm sure I said it to you, too, is they did take a lot out of the trailers that we saw. Like, that scene with Paul Rudd and them on the on the top sure, of the building with, laughing with the jackets. Sure, with like, like, Yeah, when it, was that? It just like, yeah. and And you look at it like the background, the sky was already frozen. So that means Garaka was already at the firehouse because as he was coming, that was happening. Of course. So, like, I don't want to say that there was an al alternate ending, but... Are we going to see a director's cut? So no. Joe Cannon, we want to see a director's so, cut. So Gillis said no. So, that's true, I didn't see that. But, yeah. you know, when I had set up the theaters at Seacaucus in Cranford, I got an email a couple weeks before that they chopped that movie like 16 or 17 minutes. So yeah. there was some last-minute editing for sure. Obviously, that was, you know... A, Janine not saying Ghostbusters what you want. So and they, they and they did re, they did reshoots re in, in Atlanta. Georgia, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And, and it's interesting because I, I was listening to the yeah, yes have some. They did a Q and A, um, and they I mean this is amazing. They got to sit behind the video village, you know where the director sits, mm -hmm. and watch the scene with Bill Murray and the Firemaster being filmed live. Oh really? That and was actually that was a really funny scene. It I was really a great scene. Yeah. And I did I remember texting them about it, but I was like, how did you not? Yeah, crack up laughing while they were filming that, and that, just they said the pencil on his head. It was yeah. They said it was really hard. The hardest thing about that was seeing, you know, seeing that and not laughing. Yeah. But Craig from uh, Yes Have Some said that um, he felt like he was very privileged because that was the last shot that Bill Murray did oh. of the movie, 
And he said, I remember seeing that thinking, we're perhaps seeing the last time Venkman is ever in a Ghostbusters movie. Right? Okay. And so he was like, wow, I'm witnessing this moment of history. And then he was really annoyed when they, he did, came back for reshoots, so he didn't get to see <laughs> the, last, the last shoot with Venkman. I thought that was, was kind of funny. But so, shout out to Craig, who's saying that he loves Ghostbusters more than his uh, friends and family. I heard him say it. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who knows if he's kidding or not? But shout out to Craig from YHS. Yeah. Shout but, out to the whole YHS crew for having us at the party as well. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was an awesome party. I, so, yeah, I, I think that. And, and people get all kind of, you know, conspiracy theory about stuff that's like reshoots, oh, it means the film's in trouble. It doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, reshoots happen all the time in really, really good movies. It's just when you get something into the edit, you know, the movie's written three times. It's written when you write it. It's written when the actors perform it and they bring a new life to it, a different approach to it. And then it's written again when you edit it. And so in that editing, sometimes you go, oh, you know what, this is lumpy or you know the way that we took this doesn't work the way we thought it would do so you so, think that they watched the rough cut of it and said hey we need a little bit more for sure yeah or maybe they you know i know they shot the scene of of melody um and and phoebe walking down the street together which was very very which was kind of they were on the what their way to that moment where yeah. she so that was shot in atlanta because there's photos of that and if bill murray was there then and, and we know that that scene and you know the the scene with the firemaster was already shot in the UK, and we know that right because it was shot on that, that set. Um, my hunch is that it was firehouse based stuff. Yeah, yeah. That which was, would that was shot go to the ending, which would go to yeah. that scene with Paul Rudd. And like yeah. I mean, you're if you're if you're the sales rep at Wugsley, like everyone's freaking out over those yeah. coats after that first trailer dropped, and then. You know, I, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a different story arc to the. Well, they had yeah. Phoebe wrapped in it after she separates from her body. Yeah, yep. and I mean they Lucky, were Lucky's wearing, Lucky was wearing it, it yeah. in the in the in the. Uh, but like I mean, it was life. such a standout thing from that first trailer, and then to take it away, again, you have to imagine. I don't want to say it was a rewrite, but like, there had to be something different there, and we'll probably never know. But. Um, but anyway, so, you know, we move on. I love yeah. my Red Parker. That's all I know. Yeah. No, Shout out good. to Nick for giving me the Red Parker. <laughs> I, I remember it. I, Thank you. I, I hope, it's cold in here, folks. I, I, my expectation, if Gil gets his way, and sometimes directors don't get their way, but knowing what we know, at least from Ghost Corps, are very open to this stuff. True. Sony's yeah. a different thing to Ghost Corps, no, 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 you know, so yeah, it's fair you point. have to recognize that. But well, we figured that out at the Wonderverse, how much was put into that. I think that, I think you said it, Matt, it was kind of how almost when we were at the Wonderverse, how Ghostbusters was kind of like this constant and everything else seemed like it could have been switched out except that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that if if Gil gets his way, we'll, we're will we gonna see those scenes. And I'm a, again, I've said this on my channel before, I love special features. I mm. feel like we get less and less of them. I used to love it, you know, 10 years ago, you get a Blu-ray or a DVD and you could pile through special features for longer sure. than the movie. Yeah. And, and again, I know that not everyone's into that, but I feel like there's a real gap for that stuff now. But I would love to hear Gil saying, so this was this scene, this is where it belonged, and this is the reason that we changed it. If only it. he had signed the car after we had seen the movies, we could have got all these questions answered. Yeah, we should have. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, listen, Gil, you need to answer my questions. If, if, if he wants to go on uh, an Ecto-1 interview tour, There we go. There know, we go. Again, and, and like anybody, you know, just is, is that our uh, is that kind of our workshop? We could spitball ideas so, back so, to him. So here's That's the it. thing, and I said this to Matt. Keep in mind, Afterlife, Frozen Empire, the new crew have never shot in New York City. No, they have not driven an Ecto in New York City. They did not film at the Firehouse in New York City. The stunt squad, shout out to those guys because we were on set with you. Um, they did the driving and everything, but in these two movies. There was no filming in New York City because I believe even on the podcast you had with Jim, even the end shot in Afterlife when the car's coming back into is, the is city it, is it real. Is CGI. Yeah, and uh, I want to see the breakdown on that shot because yeah. it, cause it's interesting because we know that they went down Moore Street in yeah. the car. I mean, I wasn't there. I'd gone back to work. But well, Martin was there that day. Yeah, you, you know, you guys saw or Some of you saw. I know mm -hmm. you guys have to leave too. I've seen video of it. Martin sent me video of it. Um, I think I even put that shot that Martin gave me maybe in my video, mm. um, but um, how they transitioned from the UK set, mm. and by the way, this is an aside, uh, we were talking about this on Extraplasm, 
and we're talking about canon. Yeah. So a lot of the GB, the UK Ghostbusters uh, fans, were able to come on set and be part of that crowd. Oh, that's awesome. And so Sony, again, just demonstrating how classy they are, certainly Ghost Corpse when it comes to this stuff. They invited some of these folks to be people in the movie. That's awesome. And, and um, after they were in the movie and they had clearance, because obviously they had to all sign NDAs before they could post anything, because they took photos and stuff, um, they all made themselves shirts that said Canon. <laughs> nice. I have to Because they're now canon. If, uh, I haven't watched it nearly enough times, but most likely, I think, in the sewer dragon scene, we are probably standing on the side of the road because we're in. We were right 100%. there, hundred percent. And so we the, were also. I was in the pizza place in Roma when they were ripping past totally. the past H and M. So yeah, that shot where you see it skirting through the cars and you yes, get that wide exactly shot. that, and the bike is and right. That, we were there, and the road literally mm -hmm. just to the side. Yeah, I, every time I see that the shot, guy on the bike on the Manhattan. Totally. Uh, yeah, bike. I'm like, we have literally stood there. Mm -hmm. We just have shot, but we're in the movie. At five a.m. on Father's <laughs> Day. We might be in a shot if we watch it enough times. Yeah, but, crazy. Uh, yeah, exactly. so so good. Let's see. And and what I wanted to say, you know, just to add to this, uh, people that have joined later or didn't hear this. So part of the reason for this podcast, right? And po podcast, what we need to live stream, stream rather. I need sleep, folks. Um, is that we're inviting, you know, you to yeah. to come on a tour in the car. If you if you're in New York for Ghostbusters Day and want to have a tour in the car. You can write to this email address, Ecto1NJ. Ecto1NJ. We're doing an interview series of folks writing in the Ecto, asking them questions about the impact that Ghostbusters had on their life, what they loved about Ghostbusters. And if you are interested, or if you know Gil Cannon, Gil Cannon, if you are watching, <laughs> yeah, email. We'll, we'll put a big um, billboard up. McKenna say, Grace. Gil, call it, yeah. Yeah, any, anybody that was in the movie, um, you know, we, we should invite AC Milan. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, AC's watching. Honestly, though, <laughs> I spoke to AC last week. She was very nice, and uh, she mentioned that she had met Justin Carino and his family out yeah. on set, and yeah. they took pictures. And well, they, she took pictures with your family. Matt, yeah, and, she did. Yeah. So you know, uh, she it, she, uh, she would be like, you know, she probably critiquing my driving because she was in that <laughs> gunner seat when they were filming. So she's like, yeah, hey, you know, you know. She's not the most real experience yeah, of I, anybody. Definitely. <laughs> so um, she definitely has the most mileage hanging outside the Ecto while driving. Yeah, for sure. But. Yeah, yeah, I mean, whether you're a franchise, whether you're a fan, whether you have some kind of affiliation with the movie, email me. Tell me why you want to be in the, you know, the the interview with the Ecto. I, I I'm really interested to hear people. So one of my favorite things about ghost tours, and this is not me being corny or whatever, I love hearing people tell me like I built proton packs like this when I was a kid. This is my dream. Like that's what I wanted to do with ghost tours. I just wanted to have people do that. And now with this little project, interviewing, you'll be able to record it. You'll be able to kind of capture that moment. So right. let you yeah. know, let us know why you want to be in that Ecto interview series for the 40th anniversary. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and again, we'll, we'll do it throughout you know the next six weeks. So if you're in the area, um, shoot an email over. And then, uh, and then, yeah, the other thing too is we're going to be raffling, you know, four seats in the Ecto One NJ to Ghostbusters Day. Um, that is a thrill alone. You know, ghost tours are fun. Going to Ghostbusters Day is a whole different animal. Oh yeah. Um, and and if you do win the tour, Nick will be punctual that day. We'll be early. We we'll early to <laughs> the fire. It's, it's more fun to be late. Like the big crowds there, already, it's more fun to be but late. But with one A. Yeah, true. Might, might be fashionably late with the one. Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, uh, but yeah, so um, anyone who's hung around this long, thank you so much. Anyone who joined late, but... Um, oh, uh, someone, says when they, someone, someone says they love your post article. Oh, yeah. yeah I, did, I, I don't mention those things because I don't want to sound like a, one of those guys. But yeah, shout out to the New York Post for uh, covering the, doing that story. It was bigger than I thought. I thought it was going to be like a blurb and then I... That was a whole thing. And my grandfather calls me. He's just like, oh, you're in the post. I'm like, yeah, I know. But uh, Jim, Jim said his parents called parents him. Called him. <laughs> is this the car you were in? He said that they were not interested at until, all until it was in the in post. Anything, until it was in the post. Yeah. It's really like it's not real. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that they, the editor emailed me, called me on a Tuesday. They came on a tour Friday, and they um, 
they uh, posted it Monday, and that was that was really cool. Um, you know, definitely a clipping for for me to to put somewhere. So uh, a I big think some of my footage in the video. Yeah, that's right. And there's a credit there for Matt uh, Matt Daniels at the end there. So, I mean, well, you have that great shot of the car going into the city. So um, we do get some great shots of the car. Yeah, the ghost tours. Yeah. So of course, you know, everybody at my office, you know, the hot, they have the post. They're like, can we have your autograph? I'm like, yeah, yeah, all right, I get it. <laughs> you know, but um, the girls. So I mean, everyone, I, uh, my my father, my wife, you know, like, oh, can we have it? So it's funny, though, because, like, generally, like, do I tell people you're a logistics professional or you're a Ghostbuster now? Like, what's your day job? So, what would you prefer to be known as? I mean, that's the, that's it's an easy answer, surely. Listen, Ghostbusting's tough on the body, but still, I prefer Ghostbusting. It's, it's tough on our lungs and brain yeah. and uh, central nervous system as that, well. That's true. But, I, um, but yeah, it's just, uh, you know, something like that that kind of ha happened out of nowhere that was really cool to do. And, yeah. um, and again, I'm telling you, ghost tours, even if you're not a huge Ghostbusters fan, you're coming to New York City, it's worth just the reactions of the people. Like, it's yeah. it's crazy. People are asking how do they enter for the free tour. Uh, for the for Ghostbusters Day? Yes. Okay, so yeah, so those details will be coming in the next couple weeks, but it's going to be through the email, through the Instagram. I just kind of want to let people know that that's something that we're going to be doing. Um, you know, most of all of Ghostbusters Day is pretty much run through Buffalo, Dan and his team. But this one, because obviously it's my car, I'll be, I'll be doing it through the Instagram. So uh, stay tuned to the Instagram. Um, tonight was more of like, hey, who wants to be on these... Uh, these ecto interviews because um, it's going to be a lot of fun so yeah but but yeah keep it locked to the page your details will be coming soon gavin's asking are your proton packs custom made so so, the so mixed economy of yeah packs. so honestly there's quite a few in the car i mean we have modified we have like, spirits so we, we have, have like 13 proton packs oh right yeah now. it's ridiculous there's a lot of nuclear accelerators um so yeah we have we have modified spirit packs we have regular spirit packs we have the hazlab packs we have custom builds that I had gotten from a prop builder hole in the ground out in Pennsylvania. Um, so yeah, we have a variety of different ones. So, and they'll be on display here at the shop. Uh, once everything is set up here, we'll have the different variations and everything. So, um, you yeah. know, and the Hazlab, they even used it in the movie. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Ecto Z. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and Phoebe's pack that she modifies was a Hazlab. Yeah. So that sparking effect in her pack was actually practical. I love and it. And they used the Haslab as the basis. Oh, for a big it. shout out to our good buddies at Hasbro. You know, we love you, uh, Hasbro. I love Hasbro. We love. I love the repros. The fright features, uh, you know, just came out. So, um, you know, I'm sure there's more good stuff. I think they have a toy reveal or something coming up, right? They need to remake the Ecto Glows. Oh man, well I got a bunch sitting over there, but um, I'm looking to make an Ecto with for Frozen Empire with a, oh, launch, I'm sorry. a launch pad. Yeah. Shout out! Shout out to Turkey. There apparently there's an Ecnomobile in Turkey. It says we have the same vehicle. How can we reach you? You can reach me on Instagram, like Matt says, at Ecto Attack. Oh, I'll go to Turkey to go see another Ecto. Or you can email me at the Ecto Attack at yahoo.com. Yeah, there it is. Uh, I um. Ecto Attack. Uh, so anything else, fellas? Uh, Gavin's asking, does the real Ghostbusters arcade behind us work? Yes, it does. Yes, yeah. that is actually the original stand-up that I played at in Seaside Heights, New Jersey, when I was a kid. <laughs> there you have it. There you go. You can't get better than that. So you can't see it either. Now, obviously, there's a bunch of arcade games. So uh, that one actually back there, that's I could take the camera. The the I'm going to, if you're on my YouTube live stream, I'm going to take you for a quick tour. Is that all right, Nick? Yeah, it's fine with me. Okay, here we go. I'm going to see if I can. Don't mind the mess. Release this. Oh, uh, so, uh, okay, I'm going to turn this camera around. So my, the tour yeah, guest from this week, I, I see him in the, uh, in the chat here. Obama? Yeah, apparently... Uh, okay, we're going to have a look. He, he said rave, rave reviews for Ghost Tours. So he really enjoyed his Ghost Tours. So he did the, uh, what do we call it, the inaugural of the year? Is that what you would call it? Yeah, yeah. So this, I, while they I, keep I, talking I, over I, there, I, this, I, is I, the, um, I, this is the real I, Ghostbusters I, game I, here. Um, yeah, I mean, he had a, a fun day, earthquake and all. So uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. This is an original. Yeah, he's such a different And then there's a bunch of other... Awesome games here. Terrorism folks come stop and take selfies like it's crazy. But um but yeah, as Matt's giving a tour back there. So there's a course custom build Ghostbusters. This is the car. Uh shout out to Tulsa Arcade, who I bought it from during COVID. Uh this is where we've been sat the whole time doing the live. Oh, it's got like, it's, it's an emulator, it's got like five, it's a Raspberry Pi. This is our view that we Raspberry have right now. Okay, yeah. 
Uh, I'm, I'm not being creepy at all, like hanging behind your I, back. I, I, just, <laughs> I felt like that alien ride at Disney, like you're breathing on my neck. Oh, yeah, that became the Lilo and Stitch uh, ride. Is this my close-up, Mr. Nevin? And I'm standing in front of now the camera here. Sorry, people on Instagram. That's um, bad. But, yeah, so a lot of fun stuff. Again, there's still some work to be done. But, hey, if you have a suggestion for the shop, whether it's Ghostbusters, Ninja Turtles, whatever, send me a message, send us an email, let me know. Uh, it'd be fun to, you know, to do some more stuff in here, so... But, um, okay, uh, people want to do tours, yes, uh, you know, send us a message, send me a message at Echo Tech or send a message at Ecto1NJ, but we'll get you on the schedule if you're looking to do a tour. Yeah. So yeah. even if it's not the day of Ghostbusters Day? Yeah, I've gotten a lot of requests for Ghostbusters Day, uh, time frames in terms of tours, so. so I think um, we're going to have probably have to expand it to the whole week, I'm thinking. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm going to take a couple weeks out of each month, but obviously leading up into Ghostbusters Day, and then we'll give her a rest, I'll give her a rest for the summertime, but, um, but yeah, if I haven't responded to you, you know, I will get back to you, I promise. Uh, right now, like I said, we're doing it via email, but there will be a website to book and everything, so make it a lot more easy, a lot less dealing with me, so, um, but yeah, so I'm excited, it's going to be a good time. Michael Tim said, I, I wonder if that's the same uh, game, the RGB game I played in Seaside as a kid. Well, yeah, probably, probably. Could, could be. Michael Tim's. I want to say Michael Tim's came to one of the screenings, maybe Cranford, perhaps. I'm not sure. I, I had to memorize that guest list. So, um, but yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm excited to get the shop going and we'll just keep on busting, right? Right. That's what, that's what Ernie says. Keep on busting. Keep on busting. Any, any final thoughts tonight, fellas, before we sign off? No, it's fun. It's always fun to just talk Ghostbusters. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We did get a request for the lights, though, right? We did. From Turkey. We did get a From request lights. for the lights. So, like, how could we not turn the lights on? Right, let's see this if needs we, to let's happen. See if, let's see if it's going to... Uh, the battery got the juice. We're let's having, see if we got we, some. We had a jump it before. Yeah, so. we'll, uh, we'll put you back a bit so you can see uh, some ectoing. Now, I'm going to let uh, creative Matt here handle any of the uh, camera footage there. Let's see if I can... Uh... No siren. I don't want to get the noise ordinance. Yeah, the siren would be problematic. <laughs> the siren, I love it, but it is loud. It is loud, and um, after a while, it's like, okay, I've had enough. Oh, no, no, no siren. There it is. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The lights of the Echo NJ. A little slow rotators tonight, but that's all right. We'll just get a charge battery. Yeah, it's a fun space to hang out. <laughs> All right, so uh, so again, I look forward to hearing everybody's emails, comments. You know, uh, send me send me your love letter to the ghost. But like that's that's how Matt penned it. These these interviews will be a love letter to the Ghostbuster fandom. Um, so send us your stories. I'd love to hear them. Um, and uh, yeah, just again, stay tuned for the uh, the rides. Uh, in the Ecto One NJ for Ghostbusters Day, fellas, anything that you want to add before we sign off here? No, this is awesome. It's always fun to hang out with the car, and it's, it's never it's never a sad experience, is it? <laughs> That's true. Hey, you know, I guess I guess the only thing is, any, if anyone knows the Rangers score, I know they're getting oh. smoked right now through, in the first. But if you know how that ended, please message Matt so I can see. But uh, uh, Ecto Tech, anything? I oh, just want to say thanks to everyone who tuned in and. Uh, Thanks, thank you everyone for all the support uh, that you've given uh, Nick and I for Ghost Tours. We really, really, really are enjoying doing it. And uh, keep sending us those requests and we'll get you in. And, you know, so and much. a few of them, we'll see if we can throw a mat in the car, you know, with you. You know, put a request in there. Maybe you want the whole Dream Team in there with you. Oh, you yeah. Know? Good times. You know, but, yeah. No job is too big. No fee, was it? No, no job is <laughs> too big. No fee is too big. That's right. So, yeah. And if you're going to be doing the filming, I'll be there because I'll be filming it. Oh, my phone died. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, I guess that's your phone. Yeah, yeah, that's gone. So uh, <laughs> I guess still going. I guess uh, yeah. I, how does that work? But uh, okay. anyway, so yeah. Look forward to hearing from everybody. Maybe we'll do this again sometime. We have a lot of fun doing this stuff. I appreciate anybody out there hanging out this long. So um, all right, guys. Well, hey, you know, Boston makes us feel good. That's <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned for Ecto Tech after dark. <laughs> You can actually can stay tuned for Ectotech after dark and give you a walk around on the Ecto one. Uh, <laughs> good guys? Cool. cool. I think we're good. Alright guys. Look Thanks forward to hearing from you. Alright. We'll talk in. soon. I think it cut the Instagram feed. Yep, we're I out. Think I think it did. My phone died.